are listening to the Pillaging Podcast, companion podcast to PillagingJustForFun.com, the only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. This episode brought to you by Creative Media Design Studio. Check them out at creativemediamonterey.com. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. What's happening, Jay? Man, does it feel good after this weekend? Does it feel good to be a Raider? It feels real good to be a Raider. It's a new era (laughs) for Raider Nation and for the entire NFL, in my opinion. Uh, Possibly. I would say sorry, Patriots fans, but I'm not sorry. You would not say that. I'm not sorry. Let's keep it real. Well, that's what I'm saying. I would say if I really meant it, but I don't. You don't. I'm very happy right now. We're already in it, huh? We're in it. We're already in it. We're already in it. All right. So as you guys know, down goes Brady. Down goes the New England Patriots. (laughs) Um, Patriots fans are listening right now. It's like this. I don't know why you should be. You can probably see my my smile through the the speakers right now. (laughs) That's how I was on on Sunday. Um, You know, I watched the game with uh, with my my best friend, who's a Niners fan. One of my best friends, um, who's a Niners fan. We'll forgive him. Yeah, he's cool. He's, he's got he's got love for the nation now. He's hung out with me long enough. He understands. He respects. So that's why we continue to be friends. Right. But uh, man, when uh, when when Tom Brady fumbled that ball, he jumped up off the couch. Yeah. Man. Raider Nation is not the only fan base excited to see this happen, and it's a little bit of shouting mm. uh which yeah. is yeah. <clears throat> German word for uh, pleasure, yeah. uh, watching someone else's pain. <laughs> And uh, I'm not going to wallow in this for too long or or or, or really kind of like, I, I, this is it. We're going to move on from here because I don't want to be that pathetic Raider fan that's just excited when we see other people lose. Right, no. But, it, but it is, it's, it's always nice. Though. It's a good fa- feeling. It's cool. It's cool. We're on the verge of something great ourselves, and uh, I'd like to move on from this. Yes. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. <laughs> so in other Patriots news... <laughs> Uh, McDaniel's is out. Uh oh. And then he's back in. Uh oh. Pull out game. Strong. Very strong. Very strong pull out <laughs> game with this one. So uh, if you hadn't heard, Josh McDaniels had all but given his word to his agent and the in- Indianapolis Colts that he was going to be joining their squad as head coach this offseason. As it turns out, he's not. My opinion is they probably convinced him to come back for one more season. Belichick. Tom Brady going to make one more run at it. Mm. All those rumors and stuff came out about their locker room. The truth is somewhere in between the lines there. I don't think that was all true. I believe that was a Schefter article, though. Mm. I believe. Mm. And he's been spot on about a lot of Patriots stuff in the past. So there's some truth there. So my feeling is Belichick is out after this year. McDaniels is going to inherit the team. In my opinion, that's the one thing that would definitely get you know me to stay if I was in that situation. Right. 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 No, I, I, I got to agree on that. Um, but is there also a possibility because the off season has just started mm-hmm. that maybe something's on the on the come up in the next few weeks? You think so? Dude, I don't know, man. It's possible, right? You, Anything's you, possible. You think maybe he takes that would, over this that would year? Put another big ass smile on my face. Well, Tom Brady said he was going to give it a few more years. He wanted to play until he was like forty five thousand years old or something like that. <laughs> uh, we already know he drinks blood. Um. <laughs> But it's possible after that loss, uh, things change quicker than we expected. Well, maybe maybe they don't change with Tom Brady necessarily. Not but, necessarily, but, but maybe with Belichick. Maybe with Belichick, the rumors are already flying around that that Gronkowski could possibly retire this offseason. You see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I heard rumors about him getting into acting. Yeah, I don't know what. Well, you know, the dude's been banged up. He's he's had the concussion. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's he's had uh, injuries galore in the season. He's a young cat, but. It's a possibility he gets out, saves his body, and moves on to something else like that. I mean, I would not be shocked. Um, so, you know, it's not me that's bringing it up. It's not you. It's other reporters. There's right. there's, there's something to that. Right. So, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen over there? A lot of other people are feeling this is the end of an era for, for them. I mean, shoot, look what happened with the Cavs this morning. Fire sale. Yep. So I don't yep. think it's going to be that extreme in New England, but changes are coming. And uh, for Raider Nation, I know that makes y'all happy. Me, personally, I'm a little bit disappointed that if this is what's really happening, we didn't get to be the right. ones to do it. Right, right. Because so, I, I thought that that was the way it needed to happen. It's a little bittersweet. It is bittersweet. It is bittersweet. Um, 
A little technical difficulty there. <laughs> we didn't complete the tackle right there. <laughs> Missed tackle 2017 creeping into the 2018 podcast. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Jimmy G, we'll go with another non Raiders quick hit right now. We'll get these out of the way. Yeah. Jimmy G signs a big contract this week. Yeah. Tired of hearing about it on the radio. Raiders flagship has been about Jimmy G for the last eight weeks or so. Um, disappointed. As so, the, fan, I'm disappointed. The Great America 49ers. <laughs> signed him to a long-term contract yeah and you said he was due a signing bonus that's a little bit non-traditional yeah he's got about two crates of cotton candy some <laughs> cracker jacks and some hot dogs coming his way pretty soon here and he uh unlimited season pass <laughs> yeah with uh bring a friend in free days yeah scattered amongst yeah it's annual pass man. how could you not pass that up <laughs> I mean, they they didn't unload the Brinks truck, but they backed up the Gold Striker. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Wait, does it does it apply to all uh, to all Six Flags around? <laughs> no, no. By just the way, local, just local. Yeah, no longer Six Flags Park. By the way, oh, oh, is that yeah, true? Don't okay. tarnish my Six Flags parks like that. <laughs> Big amusement park fan here. Six Flags, Magic Mountain. Oh, but they're gonna go. they're gonna go ahead and throw in that Gilroy Gardens, man. They'll throw in the Gilroy Gardens. <laughs> Actually, same company. So you you're go. right on track. Knott's Berry Farm, also same company. So hey, uh, props to you, Jimmy G. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Niner fans, really excited about this. Um, they're going to the Super Bowl, apparently, according to uh, Bovada. They're like the six best odds to make the the bowl next year. Hey, I, no doubt they're going to be an improved team. Are they going to be that improved? We'll that, see, man. There remains we'll to see. be seen. We we'll do see. we do get to see them next year, though. Yeah. And uh, I want to be at that game. Yes. You know there's plenty of seats available. <laughs> As seen on TV. Yeah. You know. But it's hot there. Yeah, it's hot. There. Don't forget that. It's Don't worry. We'll be there in our black jerseys. <laughs> hey, it's hot in Alameda, too. You come check out a game in October, sit on the visitor side. You tell me it ain't hot. <laughs> do we leave? Nah. To get beer? That's it. What do we do after that? We come right back to the seat. Right back to the seat. That's why you got to get two or three. Yeah. You got one in each hand. Glad to get all that shit out of the way. <laughs> David Emerson's gone. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I'm a little bit relieved for the dude. There's a chance he gets signed by somebody else and he goes on and he, he kind of gets back to where he was. He, you know, he came in with a chip on his shoulder. That was his motivation to, to ball out when he right. got, got to Oakland. Now maybe he's got a little bit more of that again. I would say that he's got to understand this move by Oakland. It wasn't like the Redskins did. I mean, the Redskins basically gave up on him. Yeah. Um, we're letting him walk and, and make his own decisions. There's a chance that that he retires. Right, right. You know, A lot of people are really kind of hoping that he does for his own sake. Just for health reasons, man, right? I yeah. mean, if, after, after a season filled with injuries and uh, even last season, he wasn't in his best condition. Yeah. So um, just looking out for him as a Raider, right? Once yeah. a Raider, always a Raider. So we appreciate what he came in and did when he first got here because he uh, he came out, he balled out, like you said, man. Yeah. You know? And if he does want to continue to play, wish him the, l- the best, of, best of luck, man, wherever he lands. Yeah, yeah. You know? best of luck to Hammerson. Um, yeah, sad to see him go. You know, sad to see what happened to him this, this last season. But uh, who knows? He might have gone the way of Nyron Ball, you know? Yeah. Another good player for us, up-and-comer. Kind of a dark horse, really bad injury, and that's it for him. So if Emerson does go on to play, uh, I wish the best for him. I hope he's healthy. I hope he makes the right decision for himself and his family. And, and if if not, you know, you gave us the best years of your career, I guess technically you could say, short career. But still, you came to Oakland, you redeemed yourself a little bit, and that's all we can ask. You helped us out when we needed it. Yeah. Uh, Marshawn Lynch either met with the team today or he didn't meet with the team today. Mm-hmm. He either blew them off or he didn't blow them off. What we do know is he wasn't there just so he wouldn't get fined. <laughs> um, there was multiple reports that came out today. Scott Winter and um, the Raiders Lounge had tweeted out that it, that it looked like it, uh, sources were telling them um, – that Marshawn Lynch didn't it was a no show for the interview today, right? Uh, with John Gruden, John Gruden waiting at the office at three o'clock in the morning. Hell, maybe he slept through it. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at him for that. Um, and then um, 
Lynch's agent came on and, and basically called out journalists, calling us uh, couch potato journalists. And I'll lump myself into that group. I'm just an amateur. You know, Scott's an up and comer. I got a lot of respect for Scott. He's been on the show a couple times. He's given me a lot of great info in the DM. He's been a mentor to me in, in several ways. And I know he's he's somewhat new to the game. He's about two years in. He's a beat writer now. He up, uprooted his, himself and his family to move out to Las Vegas. So I have all respect for Scott. Right. I said it on Twitter today. If, if Scott says it, I believe it. I was a non-believer in the Gruden returning story until Scott tweeted it out. True. And then ESPN ran with it, and they said that they broke the story, but we all know who broke the story. So respect to you. Um, Vic Tafer, another guy I have a lot of respect for. We had him on just last week, and he was backing up Lynch's agent, saying, you know, who, who said that these reports were baloney. Right. Um, we don't know what the true story is. Chances are we may never know what the true story is. All we're going to end up knowing is, Lynch is either going to be a Raider or he's not going to be a Raider. Yep. Right now, the fan base is just completely split on that. And we're going to talk about that more later. My thoughts on the story is when it comes to journalism, a lot of times the truth is right there in the middle somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't doubt that he didn't show up today. And I, I really don't doubt that. If they're saying that, there's no news of an interview, so I'm just going to go with the news that we do have, mm -hmm. which is basically that he wasn't there. Um, but that's not to say that this meeting was not postponed right? or rescheduled. Right. It could be that Lynch had you know, um, other engagements. The dude, say what you want about him, but he does a hell of a lot for his community. Yes, he does. And that dude stays busy. Yeah, he does, man. He's so, busy. Busy there's, man. There's He's a got good, a lot going on. Yeah, so there's a good chance that both parties essentially are right. Um, did I like the way that his agent fired back on my man Scott? No, I didn't really like that. But he's an agent. His job is to protect his client. And to do damage control, and uh, maybe you got a little bit out of pocket, but dude makes the big money. He's an agent, man. Right. What am I gonna say? You right. know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, respect to, to all parties involved. I kind of do think that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Is and that yeah? Like you said, maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't, and maybe we'll uh, come to a conclusion just uh, based off of what happens with Marshawn's contract and his uh, partnership with the Raiders. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it washes out. Um, Kevin Hart lost his goddamn mind. <laughs> that was great, man. <laughs> his goddamn mind. That was hilarious. Because you know what, man? I can't be mad at him. Because I've lost my goddamn mind a few times at a Raider game, too. Uh, so, and you were there. You were there to witness one of those. Yeah. You know, thank you for keeping my secret. Um, but hey, man, when you're having a great time, you're watching your team win... Right, and you're getting in the sauce a little bit. Yeah, stuff, stuff like that happens. He's just on a bigger screen than we are, man. So, you know, he yeah. he got he got pointed out. <laughs> now that you, now that you bring it up, I need to tell a story. <laughs> I need to tell a story. So, tell a story, man. Go ahead. This was uh, last season. This was last season. Yeah, 2017 season. Uh, che and I we go to a preseason game. Yeah. And uh, it's preseason, so it's it's time for us to get into game shape, so a little, too. A little, little background, though. A little background. I had just tore my oh, right calf. Yes. I was in a, a little bit of slight pain, so I had a little bit of motivation to get uh, get a little numb. Yeah, we were trying to get numb. We were trying to get into game shape. We were doing those 16-ounce uh, reps. There you go. Right. And uh, we were hitting it hard, and uh, we get in the stadium. And, and first of all, they tried to kick us out of the damn game. Yeah. In our section, we were standing up and yelling on defense. I get it. It's a preseason game, but it's still a game, and I'm still a part of Raider Nation. And we got to get prepared for the regular season, yeah. just like the players, man. All of our section, we're like a bunch of Ranta fans at that point. There's no disrespect yeah. to Mike. We were not in a forever section. We no, were not. No, no. These were tickets I won by making some snarky comment on a website, <laughs> right? And uh, these were obviously Renner fans. They might be Raider uh, Niner fans in disguise. I don't know. They weren't used to it. They were like, whoa, these guys are wilding out. They got the security guard trying to tell us, hey, you guys, when you sit down. You were all about that action. And I was all about that negotiation. I said, we will sit down in offense. I will stand up on third down. And I'm screaming my goddamn head off on yeah, defense. That's right. First, second, third, and fourth down. You don't sit down on defense. Never that. Hell no. I don't sit down at all. And, but, uh, like you said, <laughs> we had to negotiate. And uh, security guard, he kind of threw up his hands like, okay, okay. And he backed mm -hmm. off and he let us do our thing. And I kind of looked over at the section like, show you right. right. <laughs> show you right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we carried on. Game ends. We're leaving the stadium. 
And you were leaving the game from like two seasons ago. <laughs> I was leaving the game from that day. I knew yeah. where we had parked. You were convinced we were parked in Overflow. We were parked in the south end zone parking yeah, lot. Yeah. So I was like, it was this way. I knew there was dirt. That's what I knew. <laughs> so I remembered there was dirt. It was dirt. Lot. All right. I, I said, we're, we're this way. You said, nah, we're that way. I said, nah, this way. You said, that way. I said, I'll see you at the car, bro. <laughs> uh, I get to the car. <laughs> Shay's not there. <laughs> Starts calling my phone. Bro, where are you at? Dude, I'm at the car. I'm right where I said we would be. Where are you at? Uh, I'm at an In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> I didn't know Oakland had an In-N-Out Burger. Neither did I, man. I don't even know. I got lucky, man. Those of you that have been to the stadium and those of you that are lucky enough to have found the In-N-Out Burger on your own, <laughs> preferably in a car and not on a bum knee, Know that the In N Out Burger is on the other side of 880. <laughs> and so I'm sitting in my car, literally staring across the freeway at it pretty much exactly where you're standing. And I'm like, how the hell did he get over there? <laughs> pretty quick, I might add. Yeah, man, with a bum leg. It's pretty good. You got to be impressed, man. I was quite <laughs> impressed. Long story short, I picked you up. Yeah. And we smashed out. I got you, bro. You got me, man. You got me. I got me. you. Yeah. You family, man. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Good that's, times. Good times, y'all. Good, good times. times. So, that's that's that story. <laughs> um, we, got, we got a special guest for you guys tonight. We got uh, Matt Schneidman on the air. Uh, he's a writer for the Mercury News Group. Um, he's a young cat, 22 years old. Yeah. The way this came about, I actually approached Jerry McDonald, who is a writer on IBABuzz.com, where I met a lot of these cats. And uh, in fact, got one of those cats in the studio with us right now yeah. by the name of Juice. Yeah, he's in studio. He's flying on the wall right now. We're going to get him on the mic a little bit later. Got a live studio audience today. That's it. Say something real quick. Loud. Say it loud. What's up, Nation? There we there go. You go. There, there we go. go. He might do some shout outs later. We'll see. We'll see what their comfort, comfort level's at. <laughs> but um, No pressure. No pressure. There's no pressure here. Uh, Might have found my replacement. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know, man. You do a lot. <laughs> well, is this, this, that allegedly, might, this, <laughs> there's a lot of jobs to replace if you, if we got to replace you. <laughs> so, Jerry Mack wrote for that old side. I, I wanted to get him on the podcast. He was like, Yo, I don't, I don't really do the podcast game, but hit up my colleague, Matt. Um, I already knew Matt's writing. He's a good he, dude, are actually a really, really, really good writer. Not, mm. not in the breaking news type writer, like he's well written, right? The dude can tell the story. Um, I did a little more research on him today. Uh, found out some more stuff about him. Young cat, 22 years old, but got a lot under his belt already. So I hit up Matt. He was courteous enough to come on air. So we're gonna we're gonna get him on here in a minute. Um, I asked you guys to call him with some of your questions. You guys gave me some questions. You guys gave me some hot takes. We'll put the hot takes in the break. We'll put the questions on there with Mr. Schneidman and hear what he has to say about the state of the Oakland Raiders in 2018. Oh yeah, sound good to you? It sounds great. Let's take a brief pause, bob your head to this beat, and we'll be back on with Matt Schneidman in just a minute. We're on the air here with Matt Schneidman. Uh, he works for for Bay Area News Group. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, that's some Mercury news <laughs> for all of you out there. Uh, Matt's a great writer. He's he's a young cat. He's 22 years old. Um, this is his first year right now in the Bay Area News. And um, I think Matt's a great writer. I wanted to tell you that, Matt. I think that your way, your ability to tell a story um, is going to take you a long way in sports writing. And, and I think... Those of you that are out there that are now catching on to Matt's articles and following him, and if you're not, you should. If you're a Raiders fan, you should. Um, you should be com- consuming as much of this as possible. I really think you're going to enjoy the way that Matt tells a story. And Matt, I just wanted to tell you that sincerely. I, I am a big fan of yours. Um, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. So that that's also my segue is uh, you wrote a piece recently about Todd Downing and where he's landed and what he's doing at this point. So I know a lot of you guys read that on Twitter. Um, I saw a lot of the responses to it and you know, I read it and at first I wanted to smirk because you know, Todd was the victim of, um, 
a pretty vicious witch hunt by Raider Nation this offseason um, because of the shortcomings of our offense. And, uh, you know, he, he endured a lot of slings and arrows. But that said, um, there was a lot of blame to be placed all around this team, both with players and with staff, uh, Todd Downing not excluded. But I thought that the way that you handled the story was very dignified. I thought it was really classy. And I, I thought it was great that you gave him, um, you know, uh, a window, uh, um, a platform to really kind of express his feelings and what's going on with his life now. So if you don't mind, can you can you share a little bit about how that interview felt? Did he seem like a defeated man? Does he have a new sense of purpose? Is there a future for Todd Downing in the NFL? What was your overall gist during that interview? What? How did you feel about that? For sure. So I headed down to San Ramon because uh, I got a little tip that Todd volunteers down there for a startup church run out of a local local middle school auditorium. One of his close friends who he met back in Detroit while he was coaching for the Lions at the beginning of the decade uh, started this church when he moved out here. So Todd has been a part of it. It just started back in December. Um, so I just wanted to go catch up with him. I, he was the featured speaker at this service. Uh, the theme of the day, per se, was handling conflict. And obviously, Todd has had to do quite a bit of that in the past couple months, his first season as offensive coordinator. So I stopped by. Uh, I didn't talk to him actually until after the service. So he was serving coffee like you see in that picture on the story. And I never had like a one-on-one -on -one with him during this past season. It was just press conferences. I, I always asked him questions, and, but we never had a cordial like he knew my name or whatever. But I just walked up to him and he goes, oh, I thought I saw, I thought I saw you here. N nice to see you. How you doing? And I didn't know if he was going to want to talk. I thought there, there could very well be an instance where he's like, you know what, I've moved past that. I don't want anything to, that I say to come across as negative about the Raiders. But he was very open about it. You know, we didn't really get into too much of what went wrong, uh, plays that he regrets. That was more off the record stuff. But general stuff about handling conflict and how he's had to have some tough conversations this past month or a month or so. I ha I have to think, although this wasn't something that I included in the story, but I have to think he kind of saw it coming there in the last couple of games of the season, whether or not Jack Del Rio lost his job, but he's at a really good spot right now. You know, he's obviously not struggling financially, but he, has found his calling here in this startup church. He's a big guy of faith. Uh, it's something he really enjoys. And he said his dream is still to be an offensive coordinator in the NFL right now. I'm sure, you know, the main goal is to get higher than that, but he's 37. He's a young guy. He's a talented coach. It's just, he's a casualty of the, the cruel business of the NFL. One season goes terribly wrong compared to what the expectations were. And you lose your job, especially when, Mark Davis is able to secure John Gruden, even though I think Todd was, was gone regardless of that. But getting back to what you asked, I think Todd's in a good spot. Uh, I think he'll have a job, if not this coming season, uh, sometime in the near future. I wouldn't be surprised if he latched on somewhere as a QB's coach. I don't think he's going to be an offensive coordinator. I, I think there might only be two more open spots for offensive coordinators in the league. But if he's a, an assistant somewhere, a QB's coach, he knows what he's doing. He's been a quarterback's coach for three different teams, uh, the Lions, the Bills, and the Raiders. But like you say, he's in a good spot now. It was nice to see him open up on some things the first time he's talked since being fired and just to see kind of where his mind is at in, in his days and weeks since being fired. Hey, and uh, worst case scenario, there's always a spot in the NFL for somebody that can make a great cup of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> John Gruden, that's where John and Gruden started. And he did. So... Hey, John Gruden started off being the coffee boy. Hey, man, coffee just, is great, man. Just saying, <laughs> coffee is great. Maybe he just opens up a Starbucks. I'm only here tonight because of coffee. <laughs> All right. Shot exactly. out of a cannon. Uh, what, uh, a little bit more about that. What was your motivation to write yeah. this story? I mean, what? I mean, a lot of people had already written Todd off. He was just sort of an afterthought at this point. But you took it upon yourself to write a really good story. I think it was a great way to sort of put a bow on this Todd Downing storyline. You left him in a good light. And not a lot of people wanted to do that. I thought it was a brave piece. And you did a really good job with it. What was your motivation to do so? Well, I, I think as a reporter, uh, obviously in the offseason, I've had some more time in the offseason to look for more featurey kind of stories. 
uh, during the season. We're at the facility every day. Sometimes we get caught up in the day-to-day grind and the injury reports and the short posts. And I was just looking for something longer to write. I actually saw an interaction between Derek Carr and Todd on Twitter, both strong men of faith, about the opening of this church. Hmm. And Todd mentioned that he was a fan of it and he knew the founder very closely and he was going to go. So actually, the first time I reached out to the founder on Facebook was uh, a couple weeks back. And he said, you know, you're more than welcome to come. But I'd like this church to be somewhere, you know, where where people don't have to worry about, you know, media or interviews. He said it very nicely. Uh, Let's hold off on interviews for now. And I said, all right, that's fine. And then I saw him post on Facebook later how Todd was going to be the featured speaker. So I reached out again and and just said, you know, if he's going to be speaking and it's going to be a little bit more public, you mind if I stop by and just write about what he talks, not necessarily even have a one-on-one with him. And he said, sure, sure thing. So I went in with that mindset. And so he did that. Um, and then afterward, I just approached him one-on-one and he was very kind to agree to step aside for a couple minutes. We chatted for about 10 minutes on and off the record. Um, but I, I think going back to why I wrote this story, um, I, I'm not trying to say it wasn't Todd Downing's fault. I'm not trying to say right. Raider Nation, take it easy on him because right. – you know, it's a little bit of everyone's fault. And he was very clear with me that he will take the blame for everything that went wrong. That's the kind of guy he is. But I think part of our job as reporters, we get so caught up, like I said, in the X's and O's that a lot of times we forget that, you know, these guys are humans too. And, and, you know, if people tore apart our lives and, and dissected our lives, I'm sure we would want some people to say, hey, you know, there's a person outside the white lines of the gridiron. And and that's what I said to Todd when I went up to him. I said, listen, I'm not here to say, here's Todd Downing. He still doesn't have a job. I'm here to humanize you a little bit because, and this is what I said to him, you know, we've never written about you besides football. All people know about Todd Downing is play calls and, and failure as an offensive coordinator, if that's what you want to call it. And I said, "Uh, I'm interested in humanizing you. This is you in a different element. Sure. We can talk a little bit of football, but as I'm sure you noticed, I tried to stay away from that as much as possible because people already know all the football stuff about Todd Downing. I just wanted to present a little bit of a different side of him because he is a human too. We appreciate that. And then in the article too, it said there's a few members of his, of the staff that were in attendance. Can you share who was there? I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, Brent Wieselmeyer, Brent Wieselmeyer, who was the uh, Raiders safeties coach this past year was there. I, I caught up with him for a little bit. Um, and then Bernie Parmalee, who's the running backs coach was there and Rob Moore, who's the wide receivers coach. He wasn't there on the Sunday. I went because he was recently hired by the Tennessee Titans as their receivers coach. So he's out there. Yeah. Uh, but Todd told me that before he was hired, uh, and all three of those guys were fired by the Raiders, but in between the time Rob Moore was fired and then hired, he attended as well. So I think that just speaks to. Not only are those guys are strong in the faith department as well, but Todd was saying, you know, they had a coach Bible study. Those would be some of the guys where uh, Todd would brew coffee on the same set he was in that picture in his office in the Raiders facility. And those guys and some others would just hang around and talk about anything. So I think it just goes to show, you know, even when you're not working for the same team anymore and, and you know, those, t- those ties are split up, that affiliation is split up, they still had great respect for Todd as a man. Um, I'm sure they still do as a coach, but to go there, uh, because this is a connection Todd had, Todd got them to go because this is his friend who started the church. So even though they were all fired, Todd said, Hey guys, you know, this is a really cool thing. And and they've gone to multiple ones and they've enjoyed it. So it's cool to see kind of some of the Raiders coaches who no longer work for the Raiders, former Raiders coaches, I should say, reuniting there for a little bit over something that really has nothing to do with football. That's great, man. I'm a I'm a big fan of human stories, and uh, you know we're all big fans of this game. And when people get fired, we're quick to jump on the dog pile. But at the end of the day, these these are folks too, and they got families and they got real lives mm-hmm. that are affected by this. And you know, my heart went out to Jack Del Rio. I, you know, I was very critical of him all season, as as many of us were. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. his family and himself are diehard Raider fans, and you know he's moved around several times and at the end you know him and his family are affected by this good news for him he's got roots in the bay area and i'm sure he'll do just fine i'm sure jack's gonna coach again but uh i really appreciated you showing the human side in that article um speaking of family you actually got to talk to john gruden's brother recently and you published an article today with (laughs) with jay gruden 
Um, I read the piece. I thought it was interesting. What I wanted to know, feel free to, to decline, but is there anything that didn't make the final cut uh, due to editing restraints or, you know, word count that you wanted to share? How was your time with Jay Gruden? No, that, that was the full thing. That was every single word that was said. Um, some, of, some of the questions I asked were kind of a word or two here altered just for clarity purposes because, sure. you know, when I'm talking on the phone asking questions, it might not be a perfect sentence, but that was every word he said. Uh, there was nothing outside that. I tried to get in contact with Jay. I reached out to the uh, the Washington PR guy a couple weeks ago. And actually, I did the day before they, they did the Alex Smith trade. And so then I was told that Jay was a little bit cautious uh, of giving me a ring back because he thought I was going to ask about Alex Smith. And that uh, obviously isn't official until the start of the new league year. Yeah. So he can't comment on that. But uh, I didn't ask about that just to honor that. Um, but, yeah, I, I just wanted to get his thoughts on, on John returning to coaching since he hasn't uh, offered any thoughts on that yet. I guess no one's reached out to him. But obviously, being John's younger brother, uh, he'll have stuff to say about that. And then he's very close friends with Paul Gunther, Raiders' new defensive coordinator, because uh, from 2011 to 2013, like I say in the story, Paul was a defensive assistant. Uh, helping out Mike Zimmer, who is the defensive coordinator with the Bengals, now the Vikings head coach, when, when Jay Gruden was the offensive coordinator with the Bengals. And everyone loves the old Deuce Gruden. Uh, so I thought I'd ask him a question about that. And that was actually his longest answer, obviously. So uh, three guys now with the Raiders who have close ties to Jay Gruden. But yeah, all, all that was there. Not exactly, uh, maybe not as deep, insightful, interesting as, as the Downing piece, but I just think it's an important voice on some of the new faces here in Raiders and just another layer to, to get to know or get some insight on, on some of the new faces that will be in Oakland here next season. No, absolutely. I thought it was a great piece. And, and for the, those listeners that haven't read it yet, check it out just just for the Paul Gunther part alone. If you still have questions about Paul, uh, I think after reading this piece, you're going to feel a lot better about him and what he can do with his defense because Jay had some really good things to say about him. And if you go check the stats, it all checks out. So it definitely wasn't exaggerated. And um, Matt, I think you did, again, did a really great job uh, presenting that in an unbiased way. And you got a lot out of Jay. So that, that's cool. Um, yeah. A uh, question, uh, in related to that, mm -hmm. have have you had a chance to talk to John yet? Well, the only time we've talked to John is at, at the press conference. Um, I'll be talking to him in a couple weeks or so because I'll be headed to Indianapolis for the combine, ah. and he is scheduled to talk to. I don't know if it's any media that's there. I know at the combine, this might might just be with general managers because this will be my first combine going to, but. Uh, just meeting with local media, but I was told that John will have his uh, press conference. I believe it is the Wednesday, the 28th of February. So I'll be heading to Indianapolis on Tuesday, the 27th. I think I have my dates right, but yeah, John Gruden will be talking there. And I'm sure I'm interested to, to hear what he has to say. We already got a lot of his general thoughts about the team. Um, at the intro presser, but, you know, cutting David Amerson being his first cut of former starting quarterback, uh, what to deal with Marshawn Lynch is, what to deal with Crabtree is. So I'm sure, yeah. understandably, understandably, at his intro presser, he hadn't had time to, you know, digest the roster and, and get an idea of what he's going to do. But it'll have been almost two months since that day when we meet up with him in Indianapolis. So I'm sure he'll have more to say on specific roster decisions and where he wants to go with his team because I think uh, Raider fans and readers and the audience are want to know about some more specifics now, now that uh, John has had some time to, to get down and talk to some folks. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my co-producer wants to know if John's even left the building yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw him at a, a sports bar that he's famous for, for oh, frequenting. Yes, I think Ricky's. it's Ricky's sports bar. I saw some pictures of him there the other night, so I think that might have been the only time he left the Raiders facility. So, uh, so John took a little lunch break. A little lunch break. He's he's, <laughs> he's back at it. He's got to get re-energized, man. <laughs> um, so let me let me ask you a couple more questions here before we we go mm -hmm. around the table. Um, thanks for taking the time. Actually, we've got a lot of questions for you, Matt. Yeah. Um, no problem. 
So you wrote a, uh, an article on David Sharp um, after his first appearance in that Philadelphia Eagles game. Well, I shouldn't say first appearance, but his first actual start in that Philadelphia Eagles game. Mm-hmm. He had gotten some snaps against the Giants. That didn't go well. Um, against Philadelphia, he had some good moments. Um, there's a I, I recently did a film breakdown of, of Sharp, and that should be coming out on RaiderRamble.com here in the next couple of days. Um and when I was looking at the film, there's some good and there was some bad. There's obviously there's a play in there where he absolutely shuts down Jernigan, just drives him to the ground, overpowers him, destroys him. An- another play in that game where Fletcher Cox is on the rush and it's pass coverage or pass protection, and Sharp stands him up, does a good job of staying on his feet, keeping his shoulders square, and keeps uh, Cox out of Carr's hair. That didn't sound good. <laughs> I digress. I digress. <laughs> I digress. But there's some other plays in that game where he's absolutely lost. When Sharp gets one-on-one, he's got to use his leverage and his awareness to survive. He fails, and he fails bad. There's a play in that game where he gets out to be a lead blocker, and uh, he's blocking on he's the safety or the corner, and he absolutely whiffs, leaves his feet. Could have been a big gain, and it's about a seven-yard gain. Uh, a couple other plays in that game where he just, he just gets off his feet, uh, pass rusher gets by them, one juke move, and they're gone. Looking again ahead at the San Diego Chargers game, Bosa made a piece of toast out of him. I want to know, in, in your opinion, from what you've seen, is Sharp good enough to at least be a short-term solution, possibly at right tackle, and eventually get to the point where he can take over that left tackle position? I think so. I, I think... Um, it, it's hard to forecast all this personnel stuff because we knew what Jack Del Rio thought of him. Jack Del Rio thought highly of him. Sharp was teammates with Del Rio's son at Florida. Um, so he thought highly of him, obviously, to bring him in there. I mean, he was his only option for Donald Penn, really. But he he played well. I thought, like you said, only one quarterback pressure in that Eagles game against the, the future Super Bowl champions after that really bad uh, first couple snaps against the Giants. I think it was just three snaps, but I think they're going to have the same starting offensive line as they did last year. You know, Marshall Newhouse is obviously the most shaky on that offensive line, so I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if sometime in the near future, whether that be sooner or later, Stark is stuck in that right tackle. But after this next season, when, when Donald Penn uh, hits retirement, I'm assuming that's what I'm expecting. Uh, because he signed that two-year deal or two-year extension before this season. I think Sharp would be the guy. I think uh, the biggest jump, in, and I've heard this from a bunch of people, and you know, this rookie class obviously was underwhelming. Obviously, injuries had a lot to do with that. But that, that year one to year two jump, it might be cliche, but it, it makes such a big difference. You know, For me, whether I'm a beat writer from year one to year two, whether you're a left tackle from year one to year two. So I think if Penn goes down again, if he's – not the same coming off his torn ACL. Um, I think Sharp is a viable replacement there. Penn is fully expected to start at left tackle from what I've heard. But after that, I think Sharp would definitely be a viable option there. And like you said, could he be the right tackle sooner than he is the left tackle? It's possible. I don't think so. If I had to guess, I'd say, you know, after this season when Penn, uh, assumingly, Hits retirement. Um, I would expect David Sharp to be that starting left tackle in 2019. And he's got a guy like Tom Cable now in his corner who's done far more with yeah. with much less. So um, there, there is reason to be optimistic there. And at the end of the day, David Sharp's just a big dude. And, uh, big beefy guy. Yeah. yeah, if you can't make Biggest do with that. Biggest guy on the roster. He is, yeah. yeah. What is he, like 6'5", 345? Something like that. Something like Sounds that. about right, right? Yeah, he's a big guy. So I'm going to get out of the way here for a second, Matt, and, and Che's going to fire some questions at you. So uh, fire away, Che. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, uh, I got a few questions for you. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you touched on uh, Amerson's departure uh, that took place earlier this week. And uh, there's also a very realistic possibility that Kerry uh, heads out as well, right? He is a free agent. Um, how do you see the Raiders best answering the deficiencies at the DV at the DB uh, positions, uh, specifically the corner. Yeah, it's definitely. I think that's the the most pressing need for the Raiders. I think ideally they have Gary on Conley start, but you don't mm-hmm. know how he's going to come off that shin injury. Right. Um, I, I think Kerry was probably the most consistent corner for the Raiders this year, and that's saying something because he wasn't very good. That's just how bad it was. Uh, Sean Smith probably played the best toward the end of the season, 
but they could cut him and, and not suffer too badly financially from it. Right. Um, I still, you know, I don't know if they're going to go cornerback in the first round of the draft because there's one really top tier, top tier cornerback, and that's Minka Fitzpatrick, and he's going to go before the Raiders pick, whether that be at nine or ten. Uh, if he falls to them somehow, they'd be dumb not to take him, I think. But I, I think ideally they have Conley at one spot. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Smith in his early 30s is at another spot. You saw what he can do late in the season. And they, they just have to hope with, the, with Derek Ansley as that new defensive backs coach. He coached the defensive backs at Alabama. So he, he's obviously seen some good ones to get Conley back into shape. Or, or not Conley. Uh, to get Sean Smith back into good playing shape. Obviously, we'll see what pans out with his legal situation. That's a whole different story. But I think Sean Smith is a better playmaker than T.J. Carey, and I think John Gruden will want that. Uh, T.J. Carey, like you said, he's an unrestricted free agent. Do I think they'll bring him back? It wouldn't cost them that much. It it wouldn't be the most financially crippling decision uh, to bring him back based on what he gave them last year. But it, I would be shocked if the Raiders didn't pick a corner sometime in the first three rounds of the draft to potentially start a side Gary on Conley next year. And if they don't, or if they pick one and he's not ready to start, I wouldn't be shocked if Sean Smith is that guy just based on how he closed out the season. Right, right, right. Um, so with the possibility that it ain't Sean Smith, um, is it possible that we see OB out at the corner again? Or was that an experiment gone bad that left with uh, with JDR and the rest of the coaching uh, regimen regime? Yeah, I think that I think that was an experiment gone bad. Uh, the first time we saw Obi practice at corner was before the game against the Dolphins, actually. And I asked Jack about that down in Sarasota when the Raiders practiced there, and he said, "You know, I don't know what you're talking about." And, and uh, I think he was trying to hide their plans to to play Obi at corner. But as you said. Uh, and Jack admitted it later. Credit to him. He admitted it. He said, you know, we jumped the gun on that one. Obviously, you saw him get burned by Brandon Cooks there at the start of the second half against the Patriots for the 64-yard touchdown. That kind of uh, sealed the game if it wasn't already sealed at that point to make it 24 nothing. But he's a, he's a safety. He's a guy that is best defending tight ends. But even though I say that, we don't really know what he's best at yet because he was injured. He only played five games, and he didn't get many defensive snaps after that Patriots game. So uh, as I said before, you know, we can all make our best guesses on what John Gruden is going to do, but we don't really know because we don't know how his, you know, defensive and offensive philosophies, his scheme have changed much, if at all, uh, since he last coached for the Raiders and Buccaneers. So it'll be interesting. I think, you know, Obi maybe could be an option at cornerback, but I think his body, his skill set, if it's still what we saw in spurts last year, he's probably best for safety still I don't think he starts um I think Carl Joseph is going to start I think Obi could start maybe they go safety early on in the draft but I guess my indecisiveness on the topic is indicative of you know all the questions they have at secondary so I think that says something yeah definitely definitely uh and, and my last question it's also uh it's also concerning the the corner position um <clears throat> Might the Raiders play the hand that they're given right now and possibly try to attain a Marcus Peters in the 2019 free agency? 2018. 2018? Is it 20? Oh, you I mean, it was 2019. You mean the, uh, 2019. Isn't yeah, he free probably. agent? 2019. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Or, 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 hold on, yeah. the second part to this question. Or <laughs> was the Marshawn experience, uh, you know, what damp or has the Marshawn experience dampened uh, the 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 whole hometown guy playing for his hometown team uh, idea? I don't think that you know experiment. If it is over, we don't know if it's over. Marshawn could very well be the starting running back for this team next year. That'll be probably the most interesting personnel decision John Gruden makes. But you know, it's interesting because. Does Marcus Peters only come here if Marshawn Lynch is here? Who knows? Does Marcus Peters come here even if Marshawn Lynch isn't? Who knows? I, I think Marcus Peters is in a good situation in Kansas City. They just got another starting cornerback in Kendall Fuller beside him in the Alex Smith deal. So I think that'll be a really, really good secondary or, or cornerback pairing next year. Do I see them 
going after Marcus Peters in free agency. It's possible. Um, but who knows if Reggie McKenzie is still even the GM, you know, and I hate to say this, but I, I, I hate it, trying to put my finger on these things. It, it's just, we don't know what John Green, we don't know what his emphasis is. And I'm sure it, well, I'll have much more clear answers after the combine. Um, but let's say the Raiders get a top tier cornerback in the draft this year and, and they figure out all their problems in the secondary as unlikely as that seems then they don't need to go after Marcus Peters. Sure, he's one of the best corners in the league, but let's say Gary Young turns in a great year and they get another corner in the draft who turns in a great year and they see him as a, a starter for the future, then they don't need Marcus Peters. But if the struggles persist, I wouldn't be surprised if they went after him. Um, I don't think the whole Oakland coming home thing would detract them if it, in fact, doesn't work out with Marshawn. But then again, um, they're very, very close. And like I said, I'd be interested to see if Marcus Peters is still interested coming to Oakland, if that's something the Raiders want, if Marshawn isn't here by that point. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, great responses. And I'm not letting you off the hook yet, man. You're a young <laughs> guy. I know you got a lot of energy, so we're going to keep going at it. My co-producer, uh, Raider Kane, he wanted me to ask you a couple questions. He He's very curious about what's going to happen in the first round of this draft, and he He's got a special <clears throat> affinity for one Denzel Ward. So he wants to know, <laughs> what direction do you think we go in this first round? And if we draft a corner, is Denzel Ward the best option for the Oakland Raiders in 2018? You know, to be honest with you, I, I think they go edge rusher. I think a guy, you know, Bradley Chubb is the defensive end from North Carolina State. He could be a guy there if the Raiders get the ninth pick, who's possibly still available. Arden Key is an edge rusher from, from LSU who could be a guy. While cornerback, I think, is the most needy spot <clears throat> Excuse me, on this roster, don't forget, until they switched to John Pagano as defensive coordinator, they only had 14 sacks, which is tied for worst in the NFL with the New York Giants. Yeah. And still then, they finished well, well, well into the bottom half um, because John Pagano really revitalized that pass rush, switching around some looks for Khalil Mack. But if Khalil Mack is going to be double and triple teamed, which, you know, we can expect that he will be, they need a guy on the other side who can really wreak havoc. And and I assume they'll bring back Bruce Irvin. He played really well toward the end of the year. Uh, he'll be in that second tier as an edge rusher. Danico Archery played well uh, as, a ru- as a pass rusher this year. But you, you just can't count on Mario Edwards anymore, I don't think. No. Um, but it, like I said, I think you go cornerback if Minka Fitzpatrick is still available. I don't think he's going to be. Uh, I would be willing to put my money on that. And after that, from what I've seen, the caliber of cornerback drops off more from one to that next group than the the defensive pass rushers does from one to that next group. So I think they go defensive end uh, to really shore up that, that D line because, quite frankly, they have more depth in the secondary than they do on the defensive line, the That's talent scary. might not be there, but <laughs> That's scary. they just have to hope that they just have to hope that some of that depth comes through and, and shows a little bit more than what they have last year. They just need more options on the defensive line. They don't they don't have the benefit of the doubt of saying, "All right, let's just hope some of these guys play better," because they don't have them. Right. You know, Mario Edwards, he's been injured almost every season. He played well at the start of the year, but after that, you know, you can't. I, I would say you can't really count on him. Uh, for a long stretch of being a, a great pass rusher. He's more of a run stopper, but they need a guy who can get to the quarterback. Uh, the Raiders rank 22nd in the league in quarterback pressures. Paul Gunther is a wizard with the blitz, so I think with that, they'll go uh, an edge rusher in the first round. Would I be surprised if they went cornerback? No, but I think they go pass rusher in the first round. I mean, the the corner I like in that first round is Josh Jackson, but he's rated lower than what yeah, we're picking from at. Yeah, Iowa. Yeah, that would, that would be a reach at where we're at if we traded back, which we won't. That'd be the guy I get. Um, edge rusher, if Chubb is there, that's a godsend. Uh, and if not, the guy I like is Vita Vea. Why not get some push up the middle? Um, so I agree exactly. with I agree with you in, in philosophy there. I think defensive line in the first round, you know, a good pass rush makes for a great secondary, yeah. you know. Um, right now, we're not, we're getting that double triple team. You need an excellent secondary to buy time for your 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 line to get there, and that's just not going to happen where we're at right now. So increase that pass rush. That leads to, to turnovers, interceptions. It all feeds off each other. We spent a lot of time talking about that this, this last season. So I'll get off of it. Um, last question from Kane. 
Um, he wants to know what are the chances of the Raiders addressing the wide receiver core in the draft, possibly mid-round, third through fifth. Do you see the Raiders going wide receiver in this draft, or is there enough out there in free agency that we don't touch it? That's interesting. I don't take a too close of a look at the free agent class to see, but I wouldn't be surprised if they got a guy in the draft. I certainly think they need to address the receiver position, and I think they will one way or another, whether that be in free agency or the draft. Um, and that's even if Michael Crabtree stays. I, I think they need a guy in the slot. You see teams like the Patriots with Julian Edel and Danny Amendola. You see the Eagles with Nelson Aguilar this year. You see so many teams effectively utilizing the slot receiver. And Seth Roberts just isn't that guy for the Raiders. Um, I know they used Amari in the slot a little bit. They used Jared Cook in the slot. They used Crabtree. But they need a guy who is dominantly a slot receiver and can dominate that position. Um, so, yes, I do think if, if Crabtree goes, I think they might go for an outside guy. But even if he stays, I think they, they address the slot position. So one way or another, I think uh, they address that position. All right, Matt. So we're going to get into some of these questions here for our callers. I just got three quick ones for you. And then uh, after that, we'll, we'll start to wrap up. And again, I appreciate your time. So um, the first question here comes from 303 Raider. And I'm going to get out of the way and let him answer that, ask that question uh, himself. This is 303 Raider. What's up, guys? Wow, a lot going on today. I mean, Raider Nation, I'll tell you what. Uh, I got a couple questions uh, from Mr. Matt. Matt, I do read all your articles on Barry and News Group. I think you do a great job. When, what are the crucial dates um, for the front office as far as when they need to make a decision on Sean Smith and Michael Crabtree? When is there they have roster bonuses guaranteed. I don't really look at that stuff, so I was just wondering if we'll see a decision on them or if there's a date that's coming up that will really kind of give us insight on whether we're going to keep those guys or not. So I believe it's March 14th is the start of the league year. I mean, as you saw, um, you can really cut players at any time. I think uh, the David Amerson, sorry, I was just trying to remember his name, David Amerson, his deal would have become guaranteed yesterday if the Raiders had kept him. I'm not sure the exact contract situations of each guy, but I believe by that, that 14th is when, you know, some of those guys still on contracts start to become official. Um, I think it's on a, you know, per contract basis. I, I'd have to look into all those guys deals to see, um, you know, when their contracts for 2018 become guaranteed, because I know David Amerson's contract would have become guaranteed on Wednesday, his five and a half million dollars. And that's why the Raiders got rid of him on Monday. But I, I think that's on a per contract basis. Um, so I don't think there's a set date or, or latest date when they can get rid of a guy. Um, who knows? It, it could go all the way to training camp. Let's say that they want to see Michael Crabtree on the field, see if his heart is still in it. And John Gruden doesn't just want to go off film from last year or, or the fight from last year, let's say, or, or comments from last year from the guys in the locker room. And he sees Michael Crabtree in training camp, and then he doesn't make the 53 roster. So I think uh, there isn't a set deadline. It all depends on what Gruden wants to do with some of these guys, what he thinks of them. I know that's a vague answer, yeah. but, it, you know, Marshawn Lynch could be cut tomorrow. Marshawn Lynch could be cut when the final 53-man roster is cut down. I think it, it comes down to that. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense. It's, it's a tricky question there from 303, but he's always got good questions for us. So <laughs> we appreciate that. And uh, I think you, you took a good stab at it there. Um, next question comes from Raider Tahoe, and I'll let him ask you this. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Raider Tahoe here. Um, just wanted to call in with a question about Sean Smith. Um, I know he's played like garbage a little bit over the years, but he's also played really well for us at times. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious as to whether that's more scheme-oriented or player um, issues. And then as far as player issues go, like with his legal problems, do you think he'll be coming back this season with the price tag that he's scheduled to get? Well, I definitely think he's past his prime. He'll be 31 next year. Um, numbers show cornerbacks at that age are starting to regress or have regressed already. Um, if I had to take a stab at it, I would say he does come back next year, like I said, because 
they're looking for a, another starting cornerback. And let's say they don't get one in the first two rounds. Let's say they don't get one in the first three rounds. Like I said, I think Smith is that second starting guy just because if you take all the cornerbacks this year and say who had the best stretch of games, I think it's Smith, even though he wasn't the most consistent guy given his early season struggles, uh, and, and that's why he got benched there early in the season. He showed some of the brightest spots on the team later in the year. He had that two-interception game against the Cowboys. Um, but it, then again, it, it's all about what John Gruden sees, and I'm sure they might need some more athleticism, some more speed, because we saw Sean Smith get torched a couple times last yeah. season. Yeah. So I think Gary on Conley has that. But like I said, who knows if he'll return to full health or, or even starting caliber. So to answer that question, I think Sean Smith is back. Uh, I think it's just a declining skill set. I don't think it was anything having to do with the scheme, but it'll be interesting to see if that skill set and, and that fitness, and this is not even regarding the legal case, that could end his career altogether. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure the exact dates on, on, on that, but um, – if his skill set, you know, stays the same, it's not great. Would he start on most other teams as a cornerback? No, but this is the Raiders. They don't have great cornerbacks. So if I had to guess, I would say I think Sean Smith is back next year um, as a third cornerback or a second cornerback. All right. Yeah, it's, that's. there's been a big question mark over Smith. I think given the, the, the thin uh, depth there at the corner position, it makes either him or TJ Carey a very valuable uh, even given their limited skill set at this point, because you're not going to fix an entire mm -hmm. an entire squad, um, an entire unit in one off season. So, last question from our callers calls, comes from Poe Dunk Raider, and he does live out there in the Poe Dunks. He's like out there in the middle of nowhere, um, <laughs> but he's a good Raider fan. He's a very knowledgeable <laughs> Raider fan, and uh, he wants to know this. Hey, question for Matt S on the Pillaging Podcast tonight: uh, Who has the faster forty time, if you can guess, Jerry McDonald? Or Mark Davis? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I think it's Mark Davis because Jerry, although he's my beat partner, it was before I got to the paper, he injured his back in a dog walking accident. And he wow. had to take some days off this year, and he's been to the doctor frequently um, to get his back checked on. So, you know, my back has hurt as a 22-year-old, so Mark Davis might even beat me. <laughs> but I think just because of the the back issues, and I don't know if Jim even wants me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think because of what I know about his back health, yeah. um, he'll he'll be that Tom Brady guy. He'll be on the injury report every week, questionable with a back injury, but he'll play every single week. He'll be in that press box. Yeah. But just because of that, I think Mark Davis. Have I seen either of them run? No. Do I think <laughs> either of them are particularly speedy or fast? No. But you know, <laughs> I, I think Mark Davis was. Mark Davis could have some back issues. Uh, I'm sure he does, but uh, just from what I know, what my sources are telling me about the McDonald's <laughs> back health, I would say Mark Davis. Oh, man, great answer. Uh, and Jerry Mack, all respect to you, man. You've been holding it down for a long time in the Bay Area. Love your writing as well. And uh, like he you started said... Covering the, he started covering the Raiders the year I was born for the Bay Area News Group. Matt, don't remind me. I'm twice your age, bro. <laughs> uh I know this. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Mack, man, and, and he's going to be injured, and you know what? He's going to show up every Sunday, and he's going to deliver the goods. He's going to put the ball in the end zone one way or another. And Absolutely. Let's keep it real. Mark Davis has been running from angry Raider fans for the last – you know, twelve months. That's what I say, man. I think I think he's got a little That's bit true. of. So he's had he's had some practice. He's got at least a sprint in him. He's got at least a sprint in him. <laughs> he's yeah, he's got at least maybe, one good. Maybe sprint. no long distance running, man, but some sprints definitely. So Matt, let me hey, after after that game against the Chargers, and this is the last thing I'll say. After that game against the Chargers, when Del Rio was fired, he sprinted out of that Starbucks <laughs> center fast as all get out. He was not available for comment. He hightailed it out of there. So that that might have been the fastest forty time on the entire team. <laughs> Wow, man. So, Matt, Matt, you're 22 years old. What's up with you, man? Do you, where do you where do you come from? You went to school in Syracuse, am I correct? I did, yeah. So I, I was born in New York City, um, lived the first six, seven years of my life in New York, uh, moved to Wilton, Connecticut. It's southwestern Connecticut, uh, about 45 minutes outside of New York City. I've lived there since I was in first grade. Uh, went to school in Syracuse, New York. My dad went there. Uh, so I studied journalism there, covered the Syracuse basketball football teams for the Daily Orange, which is the student newspaper there. Um, 
my brother's a sophomore there doing the same thing, writing for the DO. And then I, uh, in journalism, you know, since jobs are so, so sparse, it's normally internships right after graduation. So I interned for three months for the Buffalo News this past summer, helping out with, with Bill's training camp and, and everything up there. Wrote a couple features for, for the Buffalo News on the Bills and other things, and then moved out here early September to start covering the Raiders, obviously, because uh, the Athletic poached a couple of our guys. That was more so on the Warriors, but Courtney Cronin, Jimmy Durkin covering the Raiders, yeah. headed out for, for some other stuff, as you guys know. So uh, I was just lucky the timing was great. Uh, very thankful. Bud Dracy, Mark Conley, my two editors, gave me the chance loving it out here to do stuff like this. Come on with you guys. What, what Matt's trying to tell you is he's not married. <laughs> I am far. I am far from it. <laughs> so, do you have time? Do you, you have time for dates and stuff like that? Are you are you squeezing that into your schedule? Uh, you know, I still got to get my my. I'm not opposed to any of that, but I still got to get my my schedule under me after year one. It was it was figuring out uh, my daily structure, and it hasn't slowed down. I'm headed out to uh, 49ers HQ tomorrow morning for an hour and a half drive to to help out with a Jimmy G press conference. Yeah. After he got his big deal today, we were saying uh, we think that they threw in um, lifetime season pass for Great America on that deal too. Um, <laughs> Chase Ch- Ch- seems to think that he's going to be paid in Cracker Jacks and cotton candy. Cotton candy. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't be against that. <laughs> the Great America 49ers. Well, all of our female listeners, make sure you track down Matt Schneidman on Twitter. Uh, where Where can we find you on Twitter, Matt? I- I'm just at Matt Schneidman, uh, all lowercase M A T T. And the last name is S C H N E I D M A N. See, just like it sounds. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, man. Well, again, we want to thank you for your time for coming on here. We know this is a long interview, but I gotta say, you absolutely crushed it. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for having me on. It was great talking to you, and uh, hope to talk again soon. Yes, absolutely. Sure. We'll definitely have you back on. Have a good night, Matt, and uh, you know, download um, I don't know, Tinder or something like that. Like, <laughs> take the rest of the night off. Take the rest of the night off. All right. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. No yeah, problem. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. So, all you ladies out there, you see my man Matt on these apps. Make sure you give him a good swipe, okay? And I mean that. What is it? What's which way? Which way you go? I think it's is right. It right. Is right, it right. Yeah. Swipe? I, I haven't been single in a couple, well, Matt, about 18 months Matt, now. right swipe Schneidman? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Swipeman. Matt, right swipeman on Twitter. Man, he crushed that interview. Yeah, man. That was good. It was good stuff. I'm tired. I don't know how he feels. Hey, we were coming at him with a lot of questions, so. You think I'd be him in the 40? Hey, you lost some weight, man. I did. I think you got a shot. Possibly. You got a shot. If I do my hands like this, <laughs> like not the ball up fist, but like the shark fin. You got to stay loose, man. Right. You tighten up. Nah. We'll work on this. You can't tighten up. You got to keep the breath. Right. Right? Steady. I'm going to brace Matt at the next home game. <laughs> yeah. He's a skinny guy. I usually don't trust skinny reporters. I trust Matt. <laughs> trust Matt. It's only a matter of time before he beefs up. All those donuts coming through the office. and You know what I mean? Hey, if he's going to go over and do the Jimmy G conference, right? He's, he might get some cotton candy and some yeah. uh, Cracker Jacks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I was going to I was gonna ask him what the average day was like and all that. We'll get into it more next time. We had a lot of questions for him for this time. and Yeah. Sound like he had a good time, so we're, we'll have Matt on again, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Up and comer. We got to corrupt these young bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Young bucks and apples. We got to find out if he's a Bills fan or a Giants fan or what the hell's going on over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, let's let's take a break. Let's open these damn windows. <laughs> Get some air in here. Freaking February, bro. Yeah, man. It's warm today. What's happening? I'm in shorts, bro. You're always in shorts, I'm bro. I'm in shorts, but I was kind of <laughs> cold the other day. Remember, I came in here, I had, I had the, yeah. I had the, the, the windbreakers on. Yeah, man. you did. I had the windbreakers on, but I'm back in shorts again. You only uh, and a t-shirt. You own two pairs of pants. That's yeah. No, man. Come on now. You have a lot of pants. Don't do me like that. Okay. Well, you always wearing shorts, man. You always ready to hoop. I appreciate that. That's after hours, man. Come on now. You okay. know work hours. I gotta wear pants. Yeah, I, I have no choice. I know. All right, Joe. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get up out of here, go to break, and we'll catch you guys on the other side with Kane's Corner, and we'll hear from some of your calls right now, and we'll come back and respond to those. We out you. Peace. Go Raiders. Pilgrim people, it's your buddy JFB. 
calling in with a random take. Shocking, I know. Uh, in regards to the Derek contract, Derek Carr contract, we might as well just call it Derek contract. Uh, in regards to the Jimmy Garoppolo flash crash of a deal that was just offered uh, right now. And listen, my take has always been you always wait to pay a player. Always. Always. Doesn't matter who it is. You always wait to pay a player. And it's simple. There's a couple reasons why. One, you had a huge organizational advantage that they deserved through Reggie's great job drafting Derek Carr in the second round, through the great tutelage of Bill Musgrave and our coaching staff who got Derek Carr a second round pick up to an MVP level quarterback after three years, and you just pissed away that winning hand by being nice and giving him a contract an extra year early. Nobody's saying let Derek Carr go, become a free agent, lowball him, anything. I'm saying be nice to him in nine months. Just don't be nice to him today in 2017 and piss away a great hand that you worked three flipping years to build and you just piss it away for what? To be nice? Be nice to him in 2021. Give him a few extra dollars there, a nice little roster bonus guaranteed money, at least you're not giving away an organizational opportunity you spent three damn years building up. It just makes no sense. And then as far as people will constantly say, well, the price for quarterbacks goes up every year. Yeah, good ones. Not dudes that go six and ten and do insanely odd things on the football field at times. Per, per cap as a percentage, even though it was a hundred less million dollars. It's all relative to the percent of the cap. So if the cap goes up 9% like it did this year, and the top salaries for quarterbacks only go up 7.8%, then that is an advantage for teams waiting a year. Full math. Love you guys. What's up, what's up, Raider Nation? Trilogy, just for fun, crew. Kenny, Kay, Kane, what's up, man? Thank you guys once again for everything you guys do. This is uh, JT from the OC. Uh, uh, see what is that on uh, IG? Uh, just fun to uh, to say, uh, Ding Dong, the witch is dead. Uh, although a lot of people don't think so. Uh, let me tell you, man. I've been watching football a long time. So happy you guys. You guys are smart people. Uh, Tom Brady, man, looks like Tom Brady. He, he, he looked old. He looked old. So, uh, regardless of what people are saying, uh, it's over. Uh, the is lost. And that's all we get for Raider Nation. So, um, anyways, I was supposed to call last week, but I was down with the flu. Been down with the flu, but uh, I'm on my way out. And uh, I was going to call uh, the day that the uh, president had the State of the Union address. And uh, so I'm, I was going to call with my State of the Raiders address. And, uh, so basically, the State of the Raiders is beautiful, man. Well, unlike the previous dimension, um, State of the Union, well, why not? We're, we're, we're getting fed the truth. And us fans, we can see the truth. We can see that David is really trying to change this thing. He, he didn't hold anything back. He took some criticism for paying uh, Gruden so much and, and, and for, for expressing how much he, he wanted him and, and uh, how much he believes. He's putting all his eggs in this basket, in the Gruden basket. And, and you know what, man? After the the trash that we've had for the last, um, what, two decades, man, of, of coaching, I'm, I'm in. I'm in, man. I'm in. Seriously. Put all the eggs in that basket, bro. Let's see where it goes, man. Let's hope, let's hope that it hatches us some, some Super Bowls and, and we're good. So forget about what the haters say. There's a lot of critics out there, people that haven't even uh, suited up, uh, such as the Max Kellerman, who are talking crap uh, about certain things that the Raiders are doing, but whatever. Uh, keep the faith. Uh, they'll never shake us. Uh, Raiders forever, no matter what. Raiders forever. We will never root for another team anyway, no matter what happens. So. Enjoy the ride, man. Enjoy the view. And uh, hasta la vista. Later. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Raider Tahoe here. Um, as far as, like, hot takes on the Raiders go, I mean, with Gruden back in the building, 
we know there's going to be some changes. Uh, so with guys like Marshawn and Crabtree, who have been uh, some of our better offensive players, uh, you know, Marshawn's only been on the team one year, but he was the best player last season, uh, in my opinion, the last half of the season. And then Crabtree, who's been lights out up until last season, um, you know, do you think that Gruden will end up keeping these guys or go in a different direction? Because it seems like Crabtree, for the money he's getting paid, is extremely, uh, if he can put out like he has previous to last season, then he's, you know, we're getting a deal. Uh, and as far as Marshawn, if he can play the way he did in the last eight games of the season this year, then, you know, we, we'd be paying about par on what, you know, good running backs receive. So, um, you know, just curious as to that. And then guys like Roberts and Patterson uh, do, you know, I think Gruden can probably get the most out of them. I mean, Roberts has had... Yes, everybody had drop issues last year, but Roberts, you know, he's a good player, and Patterson showed capabilities of being a really good player, so maybe Gruden can get the best out of them, and players like uh, D-Wash and Little Richard, you know, maybe those guys can, can be an upbeat in their production as well. I mean, uh, we know that Gruden likes his fast, shifty runners, and those guys are both shifty. So, uh, you know, we'll see. And then, um, you know, it seems like on the blog, Travis Carey's getting tons of love. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I get it. He was the best cornerback we had for the most part last season, but, I mean, that wasn't the same. Uh, hey, Raider Tahoe again here. Uh, got cut off by the machine. So, um, I left off at Travis Carey, and, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see him back as a, you know, at the right price. If some team's willing to pay him starter money, then I don't think we should bring him back at that, at that, uh, number. So, uh, and I think in free agency, there's, you know, just as good, if not better, options available, too. So, the guy I would like to see brought back, though, is Autry. I mean, he really put, he really came on at the end of last season, and I think, you know, given more opportunities, um, he could, he could do well. But, uh, the other thing is Tom Cable, right? Like, a lot of people are pissed that Tom Cable was brought back as a, the offensive line coach. But I mean, you think back to 2000, what was it, seven or eight, when he was working with guys like uh, Carlisle, Mario Henderson, uh, Robert Gallery, right, who was really actually starting to do kind of well. But um, and then you had guys like Newberry and Sims who were on their last leg, but he was able to get production from those guys. Um, and we really saw our running game actually start to do some things. Now, whether or not that was more Hughes uh, coordination or Cable's line schemes, uh, you know, I remember at the time we were all praising Cable, being like, wow, this, you know, look at this, we actually have an offensive line. So I'm really interested to see what he can do with guys like Osemele and Hudson, Penn, and uh, Jackson. You know, I'd, I'd also like to see who who's going to be the starting right tackle for us. Is that going to be um, Ware or Sharp, or are they going to bring in somebody in free agency or the draft even? Uh, anyway, should be good things to come, man. I mean, Gruden's back. That's something to be excited for as a Raiders fan. And uh, anyway, go Raiders. Oh, and I got to give a shout out to Turtle Girl. Love of my life. You go, girl. Hey. Hey, y'all. This is uh, Vincent, uh, representing Raider Nation down here in Alabama. 
just want to tell y'all y'all doing a great job. Um, aside from that, I don't have much to add. I don't think Marshawn's going to be staying with us from the loops of things. Um, other than that, the uh, Raider Nation and Tom Brady's a bitch. Deuces. What is up, you pillaging fools? This is Plunk calling from beautiful Lake Tahoe, where it appears they have canceled the winter. Anyway, so what do I think happens with Chucky coming on? I think that he cleans house. I think we're going to lose a bunch of people. I think Lynch is gone. I think Krabs is gone. Uh, and who knows else? Um... And then Chucky starts anew and brings in his own crew. So that's what I think. What do you think? Peace. What's up, villagers? It's in one word, Raider, and here's my hot take. Raider Nation thinks we're going to be big players in the free agent market because we're going to purchase some contracts. I think you guys are wrong. I think even with Sean Smith being cut, we'll have 27 mil. I think max extension happens. That will add an additional 6 million to the cap because he's getting paid already 14. So that would leave us with 27 mil minus six, 21 mil. You need six mil for rookies, right? For your draft class around there. So that would leave us 15 mil. We still got to sign Bowman. And then somehow we got to figure out how to sign a corner. You don't want to have to draft the corner in the first and then have a rookie corner, a second year corner that's basically a rookie because he only played in what, two games, which is Conley. Uh, KJ is what third year going on his third year missed a lot of his first year and then Obi had what 10 snaps during the year that's a very young secondary you don't want to go in there like that although I love Josh Jackson um, and Denzel Ward I think he's a nice player I think you have to get a veteran corner and we don't have a lot of money to do so don't see us getting a guy like Jarvis Landry um, I'm hoping Crabtree stays I'm hoping the sit down goes well because it adds, adds his value 7 mil Landry's going to get somewhere in the 12 13 mil range hopefully the sit down with Crab goes well hopefully he wants to stay here hopefully Gruden sells them somewhat um, now you can still get more money by doing things like cutting Newhouse Cutty Lynch, but still, not a lot of money to play with, guys. I think you're going to be disappointed if you think that we're big players in free agency. My question to Matt would be, who should we be looking at? Maybe under the radar, uh, not very expensive free agents that would help our roster. Thanks, guys. Kenny, Jay, greetings from Vail, Colorado. This is 303 Raider. What's up, guys? You know, I've been hard on Crabtree just because of the rumors of him quitting. I mean, ultimately, he's got talent. He's faded the last couple of years, but his salary, if John Gruden wants to keep him, then I'm all good with that because he's always had, you know, veteran receivers. So what is the date for Crabtree? And then Sean Smith, I'm not a buyer of. I think, yes, he played better under, with Pagano, but the issue is, I mean, we played some crappy quarterbacks, Paxton Lynch, um, uh, Geno Smith. And I, I forget the other back. And then we played Foles, but that was Foles. I think that was Foles' first game, and he just didn't really have a good grasp. So, yeah, all those guys. I mean, Sean Smith looked a lot better, but we played like some of the worst quarterbacks in the league. I don't buy Sean Smith a year older. Plus, he might even be in jail. So, uh, I see us using the draft to get skill players. I mean, you know, there's many ways to, to win a Super Bowl, but since we have a you know franchise QB, let's keep surrounding him with talent. I see us getting a receiver and a running back in the first three rounds, especially if the report is true that Marshawn just ditched out on Gruden. I mean, dude, have some decency. I mean, who knows if this rumor stuff is true, but if it is, have some respect. I mean, never liked 24 coming aboard. I'm sorry, Beast Mode. Hopefully we don't see you in the silver black next year. Anyways, I'm up in the mountains enjoying some fresh snow. You guys enjoy the rest of your week. Go Raiders. 3 3 out. back uh let's respond to some of these callers che yeah has some hot takes hot takes hot in Spicy. one in one word raider had some nice takes uh it hasn't been said but um you know having two young corners on your starting roster is a bit of a risk yeah it's man yeah kind of being cautious cool. about drafting a corner in the first round and rolling him and conley out there to start now would that be good for our future yes but we're sitting on some players right now and, uh, you know, John likes his vets, so I want to be surprised if we retain one or the other, mm -hmm. whether it's TJ or Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's going to cost us a little bit, but it's also going to cost us to go out and, and, and sign a free agent, which we might do. You know, Breland's out there, who I like, uh, coming from Washington. Doubtful they get rid of him, though, because Fuller's now gone in the Alex Smith trade. But possibility, um, not likely. Talib is all but out in Denver. That's a controversial move for Raider fans. But, hey, we've been here before. You used to hate Bill Romanowski. Right. And when this you, is true. This is true, man. You know, Bill Romanowski... Uh, Ronnie Lott, some of you guys hated him just because he was a Niner. Some of you guys respected him because he's Ronnie Lott. But there's a lot of guys, it's tradition, Raider tradition, to yeah. bring these guys on board and turn them into Raiders. And uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. It's possible, man. Yeah. It's possible. But there's definitely, if that if that's a possibility, then 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 that makes uh, kind of a, closes the door on the whole crab tree Likely it does. Likely it does. You know, but he's got a shot. Um, Last time he had a shot, it went straight through his leg. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) do you you see the Jimmy Kimmel uh, phone calls? The tweets? Yeah. (laughs) They said, this dude acts all hard. The hardest thing he's ever done is shot himself in the leg. (laughs) (laughs) Amari Pooper. Am I right? Yeah. (laughs) Um. Plunk, Plunk for Hall of Fame calls in. I always like his energy on the calls. He thinks we're going to clean house, and we might, but I don't think everyone's gone. But likely, we're going to see you know some turnover. About half of these vets are yeah. are likely gone. So, you know, he's pointing that out. But uh, Plunk always bringing the energy, and I appreciate it, Plunk. You call in almost every week, and I always look forward to that. I've said many times you're one of my favorite callers just because of the sheer energy that you bring. Um. We have Venetian call in. He's he's one of our listeners over there on Reddit. So shout out to you, Venetian. You've been holding us down for a while over there. And, uh, you know, he said Tom Brady's a bitch. And as much as I hate to say it, <laughs> Tom Brady really isn't a bitch. Um, he's a hell of a player. And that, that hurts to say. And, and that being said, Tom Brady's it's a, a bitch. bitch. <laughs> That's right. So just make sure I cover all my bases. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Raider Tahu chimed in. Um, he tried to take over the show, um, tried to set the record for for world's longest call in. <laughs> but you know what? I like it, Tahu. We haven't heard from you in a little bit. You had some time to make up and uh, let that call stand on its own. And shout out to Turtle Girl. Um, sometimes his girlfriend likes to hijack his discuss account, come on the blog, and talk about turtles. And you know what? We like that. Yeah. But you know what? Change of pace. His girl still hasn't called into the show, and neither has yours. <laughs> che. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, man. I put out the challenge. Hey, man. Hey. You put out the challenge. I did. You did. If she could teach people how to speak English on the phone, she could call in with the Raiders take. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Vic. This is true. This I love is true. you. Love this is you. true. <laughs> it's all good. But I'm going to tell her, man. I'm going to tell her. If she's going to hear this. You, I know you listen to this at home. better get on the phone. God damn it. I would like that. I know smoochy smoochies. I want to take, damn it. I don't care if you write it for her, but I think she could stand on his on her own. She you could get the most like the most in depth phone call you've yeah. ever heard, man. It's just be all written by me. Uh I don't know. <laughs> no, I, just like, I think she can manage her own. She's heard us talk no, enough she's, time. She's great. She's a smart girl. She's got her own mind, man. She can yeah. say whatever she wants. Abs friggin' Lily. I've got to be careful. I don't need hashtag me too coming after me. <laughs> um, so yeah, Vicky, call in, please. We want to hear from you. I got you. I'm not sending your husband home. Your well, yeah. All intents and purposes, <laughs> your hubby. I'm not sending him home until you call in. <laughs> Just kidding. Hostage. And uh, JT or sorry, JP from the OC. Uh, John Preck on Twitter. Sleep. What is that on Instagram? Uh, big fan of ours. We're a big fan of his. Uh, he's putting all his eggs in the Gruden basket. He said he was skeptical at first, but he's going to go go all in. What other choice do we have, right? Hey man, it's all Raider fans, right? We yeah. got to go all in, man. This is what we got to ride with. Got to get behind your dude. He's, yeah, he's yeah. the captain of the ship now. So I'm going all in on John Gruden. John, if you're at the facility right now listening to this, <laughs> and if you're not, you should be because I know you absorb all things Raiders. I know you're listening, John. You're going to be on the show this time next year. That's our goal. Put a pin in that. Hot take. Hot. And JFB blew out his goddamn phone. <laughs> his take was so hot. Got really hot. His Overheated. Phone, his phone just dropped out on him. Yeah, switch batteries. Uh, I kind of edited out the pause there for you guys listening. There was quite a bit of his call that we missed. Um, 
But yeah, Derek Carr overpaid. We get it. Six and ten. We get it. <laughs> uh, this is the same guy that wanted us to draft Johnny Manziel and said that Khalil Mack was not going to be a superstar in the NFL. Ow. I love you, JFB. <laughs> um, you're a gambler through and through. You swing big. You miss big. Sometimes you hit big. And that's what we like about you. So, JFB, go buy a new phone. Call us back next week. Unapologetic, man. We like it. Yeah, usually I make people throw their phones out the window. <laughs> JFB's phone just jumped out the window. <laughs> just kidding. Anyways, those are our caller responses. Yeah. Did we hit them all? They were good. I think so. Yeah. It's time to get Kane on here and play a little GM. Let's do it, man. I want to see I want to see what Kane got for us today. All right, we're going to take a, a brief pause here. Um, enjoy the bass. I produce these little segments, by the way. Feel the bass. These are old beats. These are Some of these bass. beats are 10 years old. We'll get some fresh beats on here maybe when the season starts. Oh, happy birthday, Dilla, man. Happy birthday, Jay Dilla. Yeah, man. And happy birthday, Reggie and Riley McKenzie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Are we going to have to start a birthday segment? Happy? No. 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 Don't no. sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve Wonder's the man, man. Yeah. He was the man until, <laughs> yeah, until he came with that. I just called and then and let's just over. forget about th- that album, man. Can we let that go? The man put out how many albums before that? Hey, I'm letting it go. I'm just let's tired let it of go, man. I'm just tired of you know when I tell people, do you like Stevie Wonder? And they're like, oh, I love that song. I just called <laughs> the worst, the worst damn album he ever yeah. put out. Hey, man, it's not his fault, man. All the technology started coming out. Yeah, he started getting all electronic on us, thinking he was a part-time rapper. Yeah, yeah. sorry, Stevie, Stevie Wonder. It's okay, man. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I see you. Yeah, I see you. Hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> che realized what he was saying halfway through what he was saying. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyways, brief pause, and we'll come back on the other side with Kane's Corner. All right, every week is Kane's Corner brought to you by NFLShop.com. Make sure you go to PJ4F.com and click through the banner. We get a little piece of the pie when you buy yourself a brand new jersey. Help keep this pirate ship on the water. It is the off season. We got a lot of sea to sail, and your help is appreciated. So, you know, go go renew yourself a new jersey. Uh, maybe don't buy one of these vets on the bubble. Uh, get yourself a young buck, maybe a Conley jersey, maybe a Derek Carr jersey if you don't have one already. Hey, the surest thing is go ahead and get a legend. Okay, go get yourself, oh. go get yourself an Alzado. Go get yourself a long, yeah. you know, a Belitnikov. Yeah. One of those jerseys. Man. I was just rocking. Can't go Al- wrong with that. Just rocking the Alzado. He's a '77. Is the year I was born. I like the jersey. There you go. Yeah, get yourself. I like that. Get yourself a throwback. Those Mitchell and Ness jerseys. Real nice. Real nice. What's up, Kane? How you doing, bro? I'm all right, my brother. I'm all right. And speaking of jerseys, uh, I-, I was thinking about getting a Skip Thomas jersey, man. Ooh, Doctor Death. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I just saw him. I don't think I've ever seen one of those. In, no. Yeah, I've never seen one of those. That would be a real nice pick right there. I like that. I like that a lot. Got to get you like a doctor. That's my, Tom, Thomas, is, Thomas is my last name, so that will fit perfect, you know? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We got to get you a little uh, Dr. Death patch. or uh, I think he had that Dr. Death towel for a little while. I think I've seen that. So, yeah, that would be a cool little accessory to go with your gear. But, yeah, let him know. Who's Thomas? That's you right. don't know who Skip Thomas is? Let me see your Raider card. Right? <laughs> I like that. Uh, right, Revolt. right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to test fans' knowledge. You get that cutty throwback jersey. That's that's a conversation starter. Yeah. That's what that is. It is. And Kane's been schooling Raider fans since. It's been schooling, schooling them. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So, Raider Kane, what I wanted you to do this week is play a little bit of GM for us. I got some GM questions for you, and you're going to have to make some decisions on this roster. Are you ready for me to hit you? Uh, sure, shoot, man, shoot. Let's go for it. All right, so let's let's start off here with the with the uh, elephant in the room. At this point, you're the Raiders GM. Do you bring back Marshawn Lynch? Uh, uh, strictly on productivity and the fact that he worked well with Tom Cable, I'm gonna say yes. But only for those two reasons. Okay. 
those are good reasons. Mm-hmm. When it comes down to it, it's all about production on the field. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, you know, John Gruden is a guy I trust. Keep this locker room together. What say you, Che? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, I was I was leaning more towards yes, retain him. Let's see what he's got for a second year. Yeah. Um, but all the speculation, all the recent stuff that's been out there, I don't know. No, I'm starting to. Right. Starting to doubt that. Starting right. to doubt it. All right. right. I'm not. I'm not completely taken off of it. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not. Mm-hmm. Not still for it, but yeah. Well, but but Kane has good points, right? Yeah. Based no, no, solely on his based, Have you based it solely on his product productivity and and the fact that he's worked with Cable before? Then yeah, I yeah. think it's it's worth giving it a shot again. Roll the dice, right? Yeah. All right. Second question, GM Kane. You got to pick between TJ Carey and Sean Smith. Who's coming back? Ah, neither one. <laughs> um, uh, it's a GM mover. Pick one, oh my god! Okay, if I had to pick one, man, this is this this requires a little bit of an answer here. Okay, Sean Smith did not have a good season. We all know that. Yeah. Until Pagano took over the, when Pagano took over the defense and simplified it, then Sean Smith looked like Sean Smith from Kansas City. We follow what I'm saying. TJ Carey, on the other hand, it to me will never be more than a number two corner in this league. Right. And if you try to make him a number one corner, you're making a big mistake. And I, I even think if you try to make him a number two, that's that's reaching a little bit. So if I was gonna bring somebody back, it'd probably be Sean Smith. I know y'all gonna hate me for saying that, but hey, at least he's he's been a starter in the league. He's guarded the top receivers in the league. He has experience doing it, um, more experience than TJ Carey. So, yeah, I would, I'm going I'm to bring back Sean Smith. All right. We just had Matt Schneidman on, and he, and he would tend to agree with you. He, he thinks that, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit of a risk bringing in another young corner. Um, if Mika's not there at the top of the draft, then, then maybe you don't pick a guy. Um, he feels like defensive line is a bigger need at this point, and he's bringing back Sean Smith too. So if you had to pick one, Sean Smith, again, more veteran experience, probably more upside despite what what we saw last season. Like you said, he was trending upwards towards the end of the year. So I, I like that move. You do the same? I, I do the same. Mm-hmm. I do the same just because you, you don't know what, what uh, Carey's price tag is going to be run up to, right? So yeah. uh, more than likely it's probably going to be – you know, cheaper for us to keep Smith than, than yeah. Carey. Yeah, and, and Carey, um, I, I'd say within a season, this hasn't been a problem, but season over season, he's lacked consistency. He had a better year last year than he did the year before that, and the year before that, he had a pretty good year. So up and down season to yeah. season, um, that being the case, uh, I think Kane's spot on. I don't think he's never ever going to be a number one corner. And I think a team is probably going to overpay for him this off season. Right. right. I would rather it not be us. Exactly. So uh, good pick there, GM Kane. And, and, and in a perfect world, he says he's going to cross off both their names and maybe what would you do? Dip into free agency, or I know you're you're high on Denzel Ward, correct? Would you do a little bit of both? Maybe go free agency and pick up Ward. Um, if I'm gonna go, yeah. I, actually, you know what? No, I would take. I would keep Sean Smith as a veteran corner. And then I would draft Denzel Ward with the ninth or tenth pick, whichever one we have. And then you got insurance, which, and like you said, you don't know command on the market. We contract for nine. Oh, we're losing. We're losing Kane here a little bit. His uh, his reception's kind of cutting out. But I think what he's saying is, uh, you know, you you got some you got some insurance there. You got Conley on the roster. Uh, you're going to sign Sean Smith. And uh, you draft a young guy like Ward, and maybe you groom him in the slot position there a little bit, and you yep. bring him up. Um, you transition Smith out, and now you got two young corners and both Ward and Conley. That's a pretty sound plan right there. If the Raiders were to go that direction, uh, that would make some sense to me. So, uh, Kane, are you still there? I'm still here. All right, good. It looks like we got you back. So, uh, final GM question. Uh, going now to the the defensive line, we got two younger players on there uh, that came to the squad um, within a short time of each other, and they both flashed at times. One's flashed more than the other. The two guys I'm talking about are Justin Ellis and Danico Autry. You can only keep one of these guys. Who's the guy that stays on the roster in 2018? Both of which are free agents as of right now. Well, going into this offseason, as of March. 
Oh, let's see. Um, Denico Autry is a defensive end. Am I not correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, and he plays. He plays a little bit on the inside. He does. Yeah. So he's versatile. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so uh, J- Jelly is a strictly a defensive tackle, and he hasn't really set the world on fire since he's been here. So I'm gonna go with the young guy, and once again, I'm gonna use this time. I'm gonna say Jelly is probably gonna command more money than than Autry. And uh, we need money to sign, you know, Mac and other players that's coming up on uh, for contract renewal. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say go with Autry, and we let Jelly walk. Yeah, as you guys know out there listening, we're big Danico Autry fans on this podcast. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's that's not the obvious choice. I don't want to um I don't want to reduce his his answer to that. It it is a tough decision, but if I had to go one or the other, I'm gonna go with Autry. He gets his big hands up there. It, man. And uh, we heard his name called a lot down the stretch. That's it, man. Yeah, he, he was doing his thing. He was doing his thing, and that's what you want to see. You want to see people showing out, right, giving you their best, no matter what the season is looking like, no matter what the record looks like. He was out there doing his thing. Um, so that shows like he's he, he's headed upward, man. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Kane, I know you were out of town this weekend. Um, where did you travel to? Uh, Indianapolis. Dang, man. So uh, it was cold out there, I bet, yeah? It was 21 degrees and snowing, man. It was ice cold, man. Super cold. Yeah. So I, I was kept warm, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see what you did there. <laughs> um. I wasn't feeling the. I wasn't feeling it too much. They got uh they got some good soul food out there is what you say. There's there's a soul food restaurant you routinely hit up when you go out there. You want to give them a little plug here on the podcast? What's the name of that spot? Yeah, I do definitely. If you ever in if you ever in Indianapolis, um there's a soul food restaurant is is the place is called His Eatery. I know that's a weird name on a tape for a restaurant, but it's called His Eatery. And it's got the best soul food in that town that I tasted and I've been to Indianapolis for a few times, and I tasted other places. Uh, there's another famous place in town there. It's called Country Kitchen, and it's had all, you know, when you go in, it's got all the stars on the wall, and Obama's been there, and uh, uh, Taraji P. Henson. I mean, a lot of people have been to that particular restaurant, but when you sit down, the food is not good. Uh, Try his eatery. Try his eatery. It's, it's uh, over there on East 30th. Did, did <laughs> it's you kind of s- in the hood a little bit. But it's it's some good food though. It's good food. That's where the best food is always at. No, best food's always in the hood, man. Come uh, on now. You did you say Taraji P Henson ain't there at that other spot? At the uh, at the country kitchen, yeah. yeah, yeah. They got a lot of a lot of stars. Man. They have a, a a wall of fame and Bush, uh, Bush, little Bush been there. Uh, Obama, um, uh, Hillary Clinton. They had a, a lot of people. A lot of famous people have been to this restaurant. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, in, I'm interested in Taraji because I got I kind of I kind of got a crush on Taraji. Kind of, kind of so got it. You, you seen Proud? So, so I take it you've been out to see Proud Mary then, huh? Man, I haven't seen that yet. You told me it was a cool movie though. Proud Mary was good. Yeah, I got to check that out because I got I got a big crush. Got a big crush. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so did did you get to watch this? Did you get to watch this Super Bowl while you were out there? I did actually. I did. I watched it from my hotel, and it was uh, it was one of the best Super Bowls I've seen in the last five years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's been some pretty good ones, but that one was up there. It, that it, was up there. It was one of the better Super Bowls of all time in my in my in my generation. I should say in my generation. Um, one of the better ones. We've actually had some good ones. You're right. We've had some good ones recently. They've come down to the wire. And the, uh, this Super Bowl, I felt like there was no wasted play. Every single play in this game had some kind of impact. Yeah, they, they, they all mattered, man. They all mattered. Especially those missed field goals, Absolutely. right? Those missed extra points and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a hell of a game. So I don't need to ask you who you were rooting for in that Super Bowl. Uh, I think we know. <laughs> right, you, you were going. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if the only only people that wanted the Patriots to win is, is the Patriot fans themselves. I mean, yeah. If you just a casual fan, you probably if you weren't rooting for the Eagles, then you had to be a Patriot fan. Yeah, or from that area. Yeah, 
Um, and you you said this on, on the blog, and I kind of stole it, and I put it out on Twitter, and I just wanted to reiterate it because I thought you were spot on. We were go Eagles for a minute, but that game's over, and it's back to fuck the rest. Right. Right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I pardon myself dropping the F-bomb, but hey, <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat that take. And credit goes to Kane on that because he was the first one to say it. Everyone was still temporary Eagles fan like hey, right, three right. days later. It's like, nah, bro. Nah, nah. It's Raider Nation again. It was good that day, man. Yeah. yeah that game is over, man. It's back to fuck both teams. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Man, you know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah. didn't win the Super Bowl, so I don't care who won it. Now, at this point, as long as the Patriots didn't win it, that happened, so it's over. Yep. Right. You know? Hell yeah. Sun, sun rose but, on but Monday. I will say one thing, though. I will say one thing regarding the Eagles' victory. Uh, congratulations to Chris Long and, and, and yeah. the Long family. Howard yeah. Long, and you know, is a Raider fan, well well loved by the fans. Raider Nation loves Howie Long. We're going to support your son, and, and we'll say congratulations to Chris Long, and, and he got his ring. He's a free agent, and we hope we can get maybe a little bit of Chris Long this way, maybe, guys. Instead yeah, of the, yeah the, man, that'd be the, cool. The, the Vita Vayas of the league or the – the Via Vedas of the draft or the Chubs of the draft, why not bring in Chris Long? Yeah. Yeah, man. He's got a, hey, he's so it would be a great way for him to finish off his career, too. Yeah. Right? Finish yeah. the Raider, man. Yeah, make Dad proud. And maybe, hopefully, we can get a little playoff push for him, too. Um, he's kind of a good luck charm at this point. Yeah. You know? Hey, you hear, you hear what else he did, man? No. Uh, oh, uh, he, don- he, was, he donated his entire salary for the year, man. That's crazy. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So yeah. props to him on that, man. And he ain't busy how he was Trump. like. I was like, yeah, he's he's a better person than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. man. He also said he's not going That's to the White House. Money, yeah. He did, right? That's, uh, I got it. I'm not going to the White House either. Seven, eight million a year? Um, Yeah, something like that. Some, some, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's that's good money right there. Hell yeah, man! You think he, you, you think he got some left in the tank to, to you think he can come in and, and work with you know Autry and, and the young guys Ward and Calhoun and you know kind of school them up a little bit, you know? And because um, look, guys, at this point, I have not lost faith in in my three young defensive linemen that everybody keep bashing and saying right. let's move on from. Right. I, I haven't lost faith in those guys, man. I, I think what I have lost, what I did lose faith in is the, the ability for, like I said, and I've said this before, the coaching staff from 2017, 16, and 15 didn't have the ability to, to coach up these players and get them prepared. And I think this, this coaching staff that we got coming in with Gunther and uh, his assistant, I think we might have a better shot at seeing what we really got when Reggie drafted these guys. Yeah, I, I, with the front office between Jack and Reggie, so let's see. Let, with a, let's give these cats a fresh start and stop bashing them, and and let's see what the coaching staff thinks of. If the coaching staff thinks they're good, who are we to bash and say they should they should be cut or let go? And we should move on. Right. So, like I said, I'm still with those guys, man. And I think if we bring in a Chris Long or a veteran, you know, somebody with some leadership. He can work with these young guys and help coach him up. Yeah, I, th- I think some of those young guys fell victim to just a, a really um, broken coaching staff. Yeah. And uh, poor scheme. I mean, this defense didn't work for any player that was inside of it. So, you know, we drafted him for a reason. I think there's still some raw talent there. And we got Gunther in there. He's done well with value players in the past. And we got some discipline now in the organization. And I'm right there with you, Kane. Give these young guys a shot. I still want to be against picking up a stud in the first round for that defensive line. But, hell, if Chris Long could be signed and, and we can afford it, it does a lot of things for this team. It brings in some veteran leadership to coach these guys up. Definitely going to sell some jerseys yep. um, from a marketing perspective. It's a little bit like a Lynch move, but I would say it's a much safer move. I don't see Chris Long as having the type of ego that you know allegedly Lynch has, and and uh, I think there's a lot of positives to signing a guy like Long. So you know, I think I'd be happy. It brings that nostalgia. Raider Nation is is very well steeped in nostalgia, and it definitely seems like a Raider move to me. So um, yeah, I'm with that. I, I wouldn't be mad at that as long as we don't you know have to pay through the nose for it. I, I'd say go out and, and get yourself a guy like Long. Yeah, man. Value. It's all about that value. Yeah, absolutely. 
So, uh, yeah, man, um, what you got going on for the week? It's, it's kind of uh, we're getting into the, the quiet time here in the NFL offseason. What do you got going to keep yourself busy, Kane? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm just I'm just kicking back this weekend, man. I'm not really doing too much. I got some stuff to do around the house, um, and that's really about it. I'm gonna be working behind the scenes, you know, doing what we do, Kenny. You know, and uh, yeah, yep. pretty much that's about it, my brothers. You know what I'm saying? What y'all fellas got planned this weekend? Um, we do a little early Valentine celebration with the lady. Uh, might be going out to San Francisco on Friday to see a show. It's uh, DJ Cubert, Money Mark, and Mike Patton are all doing a show together. Oh, man. That's so, dope. So I might get out okay. to that. But if not, I'm going to be with my lady. Uh, we'll do a little something, probably get some dinner. I'm going to meet the, see the family again. Her family's in town, so do that. And just kick back on Sunday. I got laundry piling up over here. I got to <laughs> clean the bathrooms, you know. Um, but yeah, hey, and and Juice is here from the blog. He's actually yeah. in studio right now, Kane. So if you want to say what's up to, to Juice, uh, he's right here. Oh, what's up, Juice? What's up, man? Uh, good to talk to you, my brother. What you up to? What's he, up, Kane? Yeah, he says what's up. I don't know if you. Not can... much, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to get it, man. That's it, man. You know, coming to the end of my shift right now. As soon as I hang up with y'all, I'm about to lock this building up and get up out of here, man. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say a little something. Kane touched on it right now. He's he's out there doing things behind the scenes. And what he means by that, Kane is a co-producer on this show. So, you know, Kane, he comes off for of Kane's Corner, but he does a lot of things behind the scenes to get some of these guests that you've we've had on the show. Vic Tafer, Lincoln Kennedy, some of these big names are landed by by Kane himself. So do me a favor, do him a favor, and follow him on Twitter, at KaneMT6. Uh, make sure you give him a follow. You see him chasing a guest, we can use your help. Get behind that, retweets, likes, all that stuff works in our favor to help convince some of these guys to come on. And, and some of them are just happy to come on right off the bat, but uh, there's, some, there's some folks we've been chasing for a while. Yeah. And we could use your help out there. Take some convincing. It does, Take right? Take some convincing. You know, Raider Nation... We got that ability to take over on Twitter. So, right. uh, Kane, I know he can use your help at times, and we're going to continue to chase down these guests. So, much respect to you, Kane. We we really appreciate it. We really thank you. Uh, yeah. Him and I locked up a few more guests today. So, um, good news is we're booked out almost all the way through March, and uh, we're going to take a quick pause on that. And then, as we get a little bit closer to the end of March, we'll we'll get back on our horse again. We're trying to bring these guys yeah. to you every week. Yeah. 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 So, what's up? We need to get you on Twitter, Che. I need, I, need, I need to make an account. Yes, sir. We need to get you out there, man. The most, the most the merrier, you know? He's, he's only got so many hours in the day, man. <laughs> I'm looking at him right now. He looks tired just thinking about it. But uh, yeah. he, you're working hard on some other things. So, yeah. you so know. Raising a child, man. Priorities, bro. Priorities. There's a lot of hours to go Oh, man. Oh, that, 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 that in itself right there can be. <laughs> it's a full-time a job, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Challenge. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, that's cool, but I, I think it's up to you and I, Kane. We need to organize this off-season barbecue for some of the pillagers. We need to get together here and, oh, yeah. and keep that tailgate vibe going through the off-season. So I'll be talking to you about that off-air, uh, where we're going to have it, who's going to be cooking what, and who's going to be invited. Uh, everybody's invited. That's who's going to be invited. got to bring that gumbo, though, Kane. Oh, man. You got to bring that gumbo, man. <sighs> Man, hey, hey, I, I, I was I was thinking about making some of that this weekend, man. It's, it's about due. Yeah. You know, so I, I usually get a couple pots in before Dungeness Crab season is Woo. over. Yeah. That's what's up. The Kane got the fire gumbo. That's how you know. That's how you know Kane keeps keeps it real with his gumbo because he even knows when the season for the Dungeness <laughs> Crab is over. I man. heard that. I heard that. I heard that. Well, uh, thanks again, man, for coming on there. We love talking to you every week, and uh, we're out there, man. We'll keep grinding and bringing these guests in, bro. Anything you want to say before we get out of here? As always, it's good working with you fellas, and let's keep up the good work, and I'll talk to you all next week, man. Everybody have a good weekend out there. Oh, and follow me on Twitter at KaneMT6, and I'll see you all out next week. Peace. All right, brother. Peace. Peace. Yeah, man, tremendous phone call. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah we got a little yeah. loose there, you know, so I like that. This so next segment is called I See You. I see you. And I see you, Juice. Yeah. You've been sitting there all night. Juice took the night off of work. He called in sick. I hope your coworkers aren't listening right now. <laughs> yeah. This is a commitment right here. This is the commitment that we say that Raider fans have right here, man. So uh, Sitting in the studio. 
yeah, so what do you mind jumping on a little bit here? You guys can kind of share. You guys can slide in. Uh, you only got one chair. You can move that chair over. Yeah, you can move that chair over. You're a strong guy. It's not that heavy. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Let's just tune this, turn this out here. You mind letting him borrow that for a second? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're good. There you go. What's up, Juice? What's up, Nation? What's up? Hey, he's got a good radio voice, man. <laughs> I like that. Um, when you got here tonight, uh, and just a little background. Juice is from the, the Pillaging Just for Fun blog, pj4f.com. It's a community we started a long time ago on another website. That website has since gone defunct. And that's what led to our website. I didn't want to lose the community. Um, side note, I was also banned from that community. Um, and, and actually, I'm also banned from the site that Matt Schneiderman's from, which I forgot to ask him about tonight. Um, but I started my own blog because I wanted to save the community, and it kind of took off from there. We wrote a couple articles. We started doing the podcast here with Kane, and then we brought Chain to the fold. And it's a, it's a thriving community. We're all still there. I don't know. How many people do you think are a part of our community? There's hundreds, man. There's a bunch of people on there. There's at least 50 are constantly, oh, constantly, constantly, yeah. every constantly day. on there every day. Yeah. yeah. I don't I'd, know how people find time. I, <laughs> that, that's why this man over here probably isn't on the block. He sees he sees the time. I, I, I see what the commitment is like, man. You yeah. got to be committed to be on that block. <laughs> um, but Juice has been a longstanding member, and what I just recently found out is he actually lives right down the street from me. We, we, went, we grew up a couple blocks away from one another. Didn't even know that. We went to high school together, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And here we are now. <laughs> Small you, world. You got any shout outs? Just everybody on the podcast, man. Everybody on the, on the, on the, the pillaging just for fun. Yeah. Uh, I was wearing my t-shirt the other day. Uh, people were checking it out. It was good. Cool. Uh, representing. I'm glad uh, you finally got that shirt. Yeah, I finally got the shirt. <laughs> Shout out to Tony and Steve over at Creative Media Design Studio. Um, go on pj4f.com, pj4f.com slash shop. Get yourself a shirt. It does look nice. Uh, when you got here earlier today, you were telling me a story. There's there's one strong golden rule in your household. Do you mind sharing what that rule is? Absolutely. Uh, you know, It's Raiders only, first off. So I've got I've got three kids and I've told them all, you know, you could, you know, be whatever baseball team, whatever basketball team, hockey, whatever, soccer. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I have teams I prefer, mm -hmm. but there's no no other it's, the Raiders are nothing. It's, it, absolutely. You get banned from the house. Yeah. You try to bring anything other than Raiders in my house. Yeah, that's, uh, a, hell yeah. that's was, a good rule. <laughs> yeah, I was telling them, you know, my son, you know, I'm 41 years old is a different deal you know as long as you're, you're you're closed matched that's good enough but my you know my old my older boy he's he's 20 years old and you know if he's got like a green hat he has to have green in his shoes and like a green shirt or what you know whatever yeah so one day man that damn kid he came home with a heather gray sweatshirt and it was a freaking philadelphia eagles oh. sweatshirt it was <laughs> yeah, green. i'm like here. what the hell like it was just stopped <laughs> dead in my track couldn't believe he tried to pull that i said they better Turn that thing inside out. It's going to end up being thrown in the street. Like, that's enough. <laughs> what happened to that oh, sweatshirt? Man. Where's that sweatshirt at now? Oh, it got lost. Apparently, <laughs> it's lost. It's not. It's no longer in our house, man. That thing's gone. I don't know if Juice does laundry every week, but he did laundry, air quotes, yeah. that yeah. week. He took out the laundry. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. It's good to see you here, man. I'm, I'm glad you took the time out to come hang out with us. Glad to be here. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, you know, I, I feel like... It's funny because I, like, I feel like I know... I feel like I know you. I feel like I know a few few of the people uh -huh. on the blog we've never met. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, she, I forgot to tell Kane. You know, one time he had posted. I think when he was in New Orleans, he had he had posted a picture of him in like this Beetlejuice guy, uh -huh. and he kept saying like, "This is juice from the blog." I had to find that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. But like, you know, one of these days, I got I got to meet Kane. I gotta yeah, meet him. yeah. Uh, definitely. If you, if you ever decide to go to a game this next season, let me know. Uh, we can carpool up there. If not, uh, I can let you know where the tailgate's at, and we'll all get together, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, it's good to have you, bro. Anything uh, else? Shout out to Dakota, my man. Every time I, if you guys are on the, on the blog, on the, uh, the site there, every time I post, just about every time I post, Dakota has to put something up there, juice related. <laughs> so I got to say shout out to that, man. Thanks to look forward to those. D Dakota is like the GIF master on our blog. Unreal. Yeah. I don't know. His GIF library is extensive. <laughs> But uh, yeah, shout out to Dakota, man. He's one of the long time, all the time bloggers. 
And uh, the community wouldn't be what it is without him and, 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 and obviously a whole bunch of others. But he's definitely a character on there. He's funny. Don't believe everything he says. Or. New post. Believe everything he says. Yeah, new post. Tonight, coming, new post. It's been slow on the blog with the post, and that's all me. But uh, we're leaning into this podcast, and, and it's, it's, a lot of energy, man. it's a lot of energy. But, yeah, man, thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. This, this was fun. This cool. Was fun. Cool. Anytime, man. Door's open. I don't want you to lose your job, but the door's <laughs> always open. I don't, I don't work every Thursday. It's okay. Okay, cool, cool, man. Yeah, you're always welcome to come through. And uh, we're going to wrap this up right now. So let's give our shout-outs, yeah? Yeah, let's do it, man. All right, you got a shout-out? Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's, uh... Hey, man, shout out Matt Schneiderman, man. Yeah, shout yeah, out to man. our guest, Matt Schneiderman. Yeah, he was he was great, man. Dude. He, he did a great job. He nailed it, man. He Every crushed answer, it. Crushed it. Man. Yeah. So shout out to you, man, because, you, you know, you took the time out of your schedule to come and talk to us, and you did us good, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And shout out, I mean, I know we always thank our guests as they're getting off the air, but we don't thank them at the end of the show. So, you know, thank you to to Vic Tafer for coming on. Yeah. He does not do a lot of radio spots. Um, thank you to Lincoln Kennedy for coming on. Big thank you to Scott Winter. You've been a big help to me. I really enjoy our conversations both on and off air. Uh, Austin Gale, man, he's, he's going to come back on too. Another smart kid. Um, we got uh, Dieter Kurtenbach coming on here in a, in a few weeks from Mercury News Group. Um Working on a couple other guys. I don't want to jinx those. Uh, Maurice Moton, busy dude right now. He covers the NBA also for Bleacher Report as well as Raider Nation. He's busy with the All-Star Weekend, but we're trying to get him on here before the month is over. So uh, shout out to those guys for sure. Yeah. Shout out Mike Rappaport, man. Yeah, shout out Mike Rapp. Uh, <laughs> not everybody listening is a Mike Rapp fan. But we are. But we are. Um, <laughs> here's the thing about Mike Rapp. If he pisses you off... Uh, he's supposed to. Um, somebody <laughs> it, it has intention, man. Somebody compared him the other day to Stephen A. Smith, and and why that is an inaccurate uh, comparison is because Stephen A. Smith takes himself way too damn seriously, and Mike Rapp, he's an actor, he's yeah. a slash comedian. Yeah, it's jokes, man. Hell yeah, it makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah, always laughing, man. Larry, I'm a big hip hop fan. We're all big hip hop fans, and so is he. And so, yeah, anyways, I've been trying to interact with him a little bit more on Twitter, and he <laughs> does a really good job interacting with fans, and he gave us a follow today. So we want to thank the I Am Rap Report podcast for following us. Yeah. Shout out to Mike Rap. Shout out to G Monetti, always ready. Yeah. Joe Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Duty. Yeah, we're part of the Rap Pack. We'll say that. Unofficially <laughs> a part of the Rap Pack over here on the Pillaging Podcast. If you're a hip-hop fan, if you know Mike Rap's movies, but you haven't found out about his podcast yet, go check them out. Yeah. Great, great show. Times. This is a great show, man. Yeah. It's a great show. Yeah, I listen uh multiple shows a week. They're working hard, bro. Hell yeah. And he's had some some great guests on recently too. So he's he's getting some top tier athletes and and whatnot. And uh also the official sideline reporter for the big three. Big three. That's it. So yeah, man, that's it. Uh wanted to tell you guys this is an out of pocket sports podcast network production. Yeah. Um, go on there. Go on their webpage, Auto Pocket Sports Network. Um, you could just search that on Google. It should pop up. There's a few other podcasts on there. If you're an NBA fan, make sure you check out their NBA show. They got an MMA show on there. Uh, they got a Vikings podcast. I know we don't have any Vikings listeners on here, <laughs> but um, I, I know I know they do cover um, you know more than just the Vikings. They they are a football show, and I've actually heard that's a really good show. I haven't gotten a chance to tune in and listen to them yet. But I will. Yeah. Um, also, I want to plug Raiders Fan Radio. They're another podcast that I like that's a Raiders radio show. Um, we're going to have Murph come on here at some point. I'm going to show up on their show at some point. So a little cross promotion. Um, you know, people say, oh, that's your competition. I say, I say a rising tide raises all boats. That's it, man. And we're all in this together. It's all Raider Nation, and we're all here to help each other out. It's all family, all love. You know, they've had guests we haven't had. We've had guests they haven't had. Maybe we can help each other out and come together as family, you know? Yeah. These cats are actually from San Jose, and they're, they're, they're out now. They're abroad now, somewhere else in the country. But uh, shout out to you guys. If you're listening, I, I like your show. Yeah. You're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. Oh, thing. last shout out uh, to Raiders Lounge. Um, my man JB from uh, the Raider Ramble crew, who I also write for RaiderRamble.com. Shout out to all of them over there, actually. Phil Robinson, uh, JB, Nick Popio, uh, Ray, um, Mar Mario, uh, Andrea over there. She does a lot of work behind the scenes, editing our articles and whatnot. She fancies herself a writer, too. She does a good job. Andrea, you got to write some more pieces, girl. 
Got to see more of that female presence in yeah. the sports reporting game. I've been telling you, lean into it. I believe in you. I think you're going to do a good job. She's going to be launching a new podcast pretty soon, too. There's other folks over at the Raider Ramble I'm missing right now. That crew just continues to grow every day. It's a tremendous roster. But check out JB, Raiders Lounge. Um, give them a shot. They, I think they're on their maybe their third episode. So try them out. See what you think, you know. Um, they again they say competition i say i listen to five different podcasts every week ain't no such thing as competition a lot of us we drive a long ways to work yeah man there's yeah. a lot of hours in the day to listen to podcasts that's man. what i'm saying yeah yeah so check us out definitely thank you all of our listeners for sticking with us but but go check them out too i uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out to some of the follows today on twitter we got 26 new follows so i want to shout out to uh, will reeve jr who covers the raiders for usa today will reeve i see you coming at you we can get you on the show uh, oaktown 510 ryan 2y banana great name <laughs> michael farnetti uh george tupola realistic raider fan tommy brokey incognigro Wow, I just said that. <laughs> Black hand side, Walter, um, upside down. I don't know how you got those letters upside down, but that is impressive. I broke my laptop trying to figure out what your name was today. <laughs> Nate Williams, Terry C., Giovanni, Sugar Shane, MD, Raiders Rich, Fly Rod Raider. Of course, the I Am Rappaport podcast and uh, SB Attack San Diego or SD, Comrade Dingo, Vince De La Cruz, Will, Shame One, Silver and Black Dreams, Chewy, these guys podcast, Red Vine, Ryan D. Bowman, David Dunn. Thank you very much for the follows. Yeah. We appreciate it. I know I didn't get all of you in there, but we'll pick it up again next week. Anything you guys want to add before we get up out of here? No, man. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You good, Juice? I'm good. All right. I'm Juice. Go Raiders for sure. Hell yeah. So uh, that's it for this week's show. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call in and leave a message to be played on air. 408-909-PJFF. We do publish fan-submitted articles, so hit me up on Twitter or email me, uh, pillagingjustforfun at gmail.com. And lastly, go get yourself some pillaging gear, pj4f.com slash shop. This has been an out-of-pocket sports network production. I'm Kenny Stapler, joined always... By your boy Che. And this week, Juice. Yeah. We out here. Peace. Go Raiders. Just win, baby. Like a fresh train coming, you're blowing the town.